It's, it's Moeller, and it's the Hello. Great Drinker. We are here! Yes, it's open bar number 28. Yeah. I'm fired up. I don't know about you, Moeller. No, oh, yeah. Ready to shit on things and drink. <laughs> don't Perfect. mix those two up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shit on drink and drink things. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're all here, and uh, we're ready to go. And, uh, well, we've got quite a bit to talk about tonight. There's, uh, as always... A fair bit going on in the world of entertainment, and we should uh, we should assemble our crew for this. How does it sound? Oh, excellent! Do it. All right, let's start bringing people in, and I'll I'll do an awkward introduction for each person. How, how does that sound? <laughs> All right. Good to me. First I'll, you know, one notch, is yeah. yeah. First one is well, he's a stalwart of this channel, and it's always an honor to have him on. It's Gary Nerdrotic. Hey, man. Hey, th we haven't started out awkward at all. I think this. <laughs> Totally <laughs> not awkward. <laughs> With someone silence. needs someone needs to make a really off color joke, and then we all just be silent for a few seconds, and then yeah. move on. It's the race to demonetization. So we'll find it really it is gamer words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we well, get our, it, out of the way at uh, Friday night times before we go live. I mean, that's usually yeah. probably a better thing. Get rid of those. Yeah. Get them out of your well, system. We we don't we don't have Dankula on tonight, so like we're usually yeah. fine in terms of like the swear count. You know, when he's on, it's like yeah, it goes off the charts. So we're we're probably going to be okay tonight, I think. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming back on again, Thanks, man. Um, um, always great to have you on. It's an honor to be here as usual. And oh, there's so much to dunk on today. <laughs> Maybe a victory lap. I don't know. We'll see if we get around to it. <laughs> there, yeah, there, there's plenty. I, I feel like yeah, this is a week where we can just say yeah, a lot of things have happened in our favor. <laughs> it's been mm -hmm. good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've got a couple of more people um, that we're going to bring in. So we have got George the Giant Slayer. Hello, man. You are Hello. a newbie for this channel, so it's a pleasure to have you on for the first time. Honored to be here. Honored to be here. It was Gary, actually, that inspired me to get started. So this is a big deal to be with him and to be with you and Mahler. Yes, so and you've got awesome. some good booze with you tonight. Oh, good yeah. To yeah. I brought the Greek Raki, it's called. It's 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 really good. Nice. What right. what What is it? Is it like it's like uh, distilled? They're called Assumpta grapes. It because I don't like Uzo. Uzo's like anise. It's like Sambuca. Critical now. We're talking about it. I can't stand it. But this is. Uh, I'm just saying. You're like yeah, sure. Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, we sometimes mix. You're just it with drinking honey. your mint Baileys, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Don't is it mean. like is it like Greek 151? Like is Pretty it much okay? Boy, <laughs> but it's smooth. Okay, it's smooth. <laughs> Hey, I and mean, we've also got uh, Echo Chamberlain, who's again, it's the, the first time that you've been on the stream, man. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we, we've talked a little bit uh, like through Twitter and stuff beforehand. And yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Like you've uh, you produced some great content, like um, really breaking down things like, um, you know, Rings of Power, um, House of the Dragon and stuff like your your analysis of things is absolutely on point, And it's really interesting to listen to your your perspectives like a can tell you obviously know a lot about the writing that goes into shows like this so yeah thank you for coming on tonight man no it's my pleasure and uh you know it's great to be invited if there's anyone who's going to make any off-color jokes that laps into awkward silences for everyone then i'm your man so uh I'll probably be that guy, especially on my debut i've also got the most boring background i think uh most Middle-aged looking background, I think, if anyone has. It's very, it's very erudite. You know, you've got a lot of books there. Like, I can tell you're, you're a professor of something, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah but no, it's a, it's a pleasure. And, you know, I've been following you guys for a long time. And it's kind of a little bit surreal to be up here with you. But uh, looking forward to getting stuck in and calling out the, the right state of Hollywood with all you guys. Nice one. Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, a bit of alcohol certainly doesn't go amiss. So that's, uh, yeah, that will obviously help you along the way. Um but yes, gentlemen, I mean, I don't even know which one to start with tonight because we've kind of got a, quite a few things I could cover. I mean, bag. I could, what, what should we do? 
I mean, you got Hollywood is losing World War Woke. I mean, this is a great week. They are indeed, yeah. Um, I was going to say, like, there, there's... Um, this is one of those situations where um, it's like the, the tide has reached its its, its maximum point. Um, there was articles coming about talking about uh, how basically every MCU character now, every, every male hero in the MCU has now been replaced by a female counterpart, um, which I just thought was fantastic it's almost like I, I don't know if that article was done um you know ironically or or mocking this whole concept but man it's like they're they're almost there like recognizing the problem that they've created for themselves but they're not quite um but yeah like when you look at them now um that all the main avengers now have a female version of themselves in the mcu so thank you had, uh, <laughs> you've got uh female thor you've got uh, female iron man you've got female mm-hmm. hulk uh, you've got female Black Panther. You've got, got well, female Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where they were going with that one. <laughs> female <laughs> Captain America. Female Captain America. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, whatever the fuck Ms. Marvel is meant to be. Um, she's like a female female version of. Uh, well, yeah, she's a Captain derivative Marvel. of Captain Marvel, who's a female Captain Marvel. So, a POC. It's oh. a POC, but it has to be a female after that. And remember, kids, that the MCU is not just turning every character into a woman. It's surrounding every male character with a minimum of two women. Some, and most of the time, it's three. Go back and watch the last five movies. And anytime a straight male of any race, uh, size or shape, goes out in a venture, he is surrounded by his crack team of women. Uh, and it's it's freaking hilarious and predictable. And... You know, there's there's some certainties in life, death, taxes, and things can only get so retarded. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are at that point. Taxes. I mean, what would be next if they hadn't failed? Were they going to put all the men in like Carmen Miranda six inch heels? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, like, what else are they going to do? There was no pushback, George. Absolutely, we'd we'd have the Trans Avengers for sure. But you saw Emily Blunt this week. She she came out and she uh, gave an interview and she was like, I'm done with the whole female lead. Anytime I read a script where it says strong female lead, she's like, I just roll my eyes. She goes, I'm bored. Yeah. Well, it, it, if you're defining character trait, it's just that you're strong. Like, you've not got a character. That's not a, that's not a character trait. That's just like a generic boilerplate thing that you're supposed to tack onto every female character at this point. Well, the, she's strong. The- of course, yeah. she's strong. What does strong even mean? Is she physically strong? Is she intellectually strong? Emotionally and strong? Strong from strong from the beginning as well, from the outset. So there's no room for character growth of any kind. If it's Galadriel, yes, or if it's uh, mm. the the 19 year old professor genius prodigy in Wakanda Forever, who's perfect in every way, right at the outset. Oh, and we'll so talk about that. Movie. Don't worry. And all the best uh, female characters across time. No, none of us fucking describe them or introduce them as, oh, they, this one has a strong female character. That's why Alien's is good. It's got a strong yeah. female character. Nobody says that. <laughs> it's like, you know why that's characters. like, I mean, that's technically a sexist statement in it of itself because you're just insinuating that all the other women aren't strong. That's the, exactly that what that is. That is an exception. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. we were able to portray strong women for over 40 years before we hit the woke era without any problem. Whether, again, you have Ripley or you had any one of Luc Besson's films, La Femme Nikita. I mean, look at her. She came off great, strong female character, but you didn't have any of this agenda. Yeah, I don't know how much of it comes down to like the, the, the sort of social media aspect of it where they feel like they have to really hammer home that point. This character is strong. You know, she's she's breaking glass ceilings. She's like defying boundaries. She's like subverting gender norms. Um, you know, it used to be that movies could just let the characters do the talking for themselves. Like what you mm. saw and why you interpreted that, that was your your understanding of the character. Now you have to be straight up told what to think about these characters. Um, it, it's like too much exposure to too much um, stupidity backstage because they don't trust you to form your own opinions about any of these characters because they're not well written enough for them to for them to actually do that no and and you know strong just means well, you said it right there it's just, it's subverting gender norms that's what's that's the basis behind this it's like strong means dude <laughs> they're just dudes now they i mean like that cover of empire magazine 
with Guy Ladriel oh. sitting with her legs so like so like she's she's gonna give birth to a Balrog. She's like she's, <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll she'll give birth to a baby, but it'll be clad in a suit of armor just like it her. It will be, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> we'll I mean, it's like her. I mean, it's everything, I even know. Wakanda Forever, Gary. I mean, look at it. It's supposed to be written by Ryan Coogler, right? And Cole, except I feel like it comes across more like from the perspective of an estrogen deprived woman looking for a hormone high by gaslighting the audience. I mean, it's like, who are they writing it for? Are they writing it for like celebrity sex dolls? I mean, seriously, there's nothing there that can grab an average audience member. Even normies are turning around now. Well, I, I think this is the interesting thing about Wakanda Forever, because obviously you're you're following on from like one of the biggest success stories of the MCU, like Black Panther, <laughs> whatever its objective qualities of, as a piece of art was a piece of marketing genius. Because they, they managed to spin this to the point where if you didn't give this movie 11 out of 10, you were a fucking racist. If you uh, didn't give you, Disney you, money, you were a racist. And yeah. Disney a lot of money out of off of white guilt, uh, straight up. And, and it, you're right. Greatest marketing campaign I've ever seen. Dude, that was, that was a rocky intro for me with the internet in 2018 because I had just come off Star Wars and I was like, Black Panther wasn't very good. And then I think you can go back to the old EFAP episodes where I'm saying, like, I couldn't believe it. People started calling me racist and Rags was like, you couldn't believe it? <laughs> like, really? And I was like, well, I, I didn't, yeah, because I, I didn't, I wasn't as familiar back then with what would happen if you criticized Sweet Black Sweet summer Panther. child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were so young and so naive. But this is, this is an interesting thing right because i think it's going to be the same story with uh, the marvels where what you had initially was a, a movie that had every fucking prop and every advantage going you know it, it it played into identity politics it played into a social movement that was going on at the time uh it was coming off uh or sorry it was right in the middle of a franchise that had unstoppable fucking momentum like the people were so hyped for the end of the infinity saga you could just have a movie that was a guy eating a bowl of cornflakes for two hours and people would have gone to watch yeah. it in their droves as long as it had marvel attached to it that's how big it was at the time but when you take all those advantages away you don't have the race angle to play on quite so much now you know the, this this movie does something completely different um you know the the momentum of the mcu is nothing like what it was two or three years ago when the original Black Panther came out uh, and you lose your star as well. What the hell do you have to go on? And the, the result is a movie that just doesn't grab people. I don't think it's, it's, it's capturing anything like that kind of momentum that Black Panther had back in the day. No, but My you, question, you uh, when I was, when I was watching it is who is the main character in this? Mm -hmm. there, was, there was about half a dozen characters who all seem to be vying for it. And it basically came down to the idea of whoever is on screen at any given time during any given vignette of what we're watching is essentially the main character then. And then we flip to some different location and essentially there's another main character you're watching for five minutes. And so it had no core to it. It was stuffed with beautiful visuals and great aesthetics and uh, it had a lot going for it, but there was just no center to it. It was a very strange, surreal experience. <laughs> That's because it was two different movies sandwiched together. One yeah. was like uh, a, a really poignant, heartfelt, um, you know, tribute to Chadwick Boseman and a lamentation on loss and, and what grief and sadness and anger can do to a person. The other one was a generic boilerplate Marvel movie with like uh, a forgettable villain, a big CGI heavy finale, lots of action, lots of explosions, lots of quippy humor. Um, and so you've got those two movies, instead of just rewriting it from the top down to, to give you a really cohesive story that dealt with the death of, of Chadwick, what you had was just a, a patch up job that was put on top of an existing script. Uh, and you, you end up, like you say, with a movie that's unfocused and, and doesn't have a real heart to it. It's just a bunch of different ideas constantly vying for your attention. And you can't get into it like because there's not really anything to grapple with there. It's a compromised script. And I think it's really obvious the more you think about it. Yeah, it's a blown opportunity. The, the fact that you called, and, and rightly so, Namor, 
Namor, a forgettable villain. Namor to to equate it to the normies or or Buffy fans like Mueller. Uh, Namor should have been Spike. Namor comes out as a villain. Namor comes out. He's got his his reasons. He's very Magneto like. You come out and yeah, he kills people, but he goes on an arc where he turns things around. But he's still that anti hero that can be kind of fun because he'll do some you know less than moral things to get the things done. That's what should. That's what Namor should be completely blew that opportunity forever first time he ever hit screen it looks nothing like the one in the comic books and i'm not even saying they've done well in the comic books of late with namor because they haven't but he's a really freaking good character and uh yeah they completely blew it by making this collage of a film and and you're right echo like you're absolutely right it's there is they just threw storytelling out the window this was a produced a piece of content. That's all it was. This was a marketing department go, well, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's put our tributes in the Chadwick Boseman. That'll spike, you know, on uh, YouTube videos, which they get, they got from like, I think porn, um, <laughs> got that little, like where people like hit the like button the most, that little wave there. That's oh, the how dial. fracking movies. Now wow. that's how they're making movies. Now, like abandoned story, story arc character who needs them. And you know what? They, Disney still has an argument. 181, 180 million. They added a million, which is kind of suspicious at the end. Um, and it did well. Now, these are the lowered project projections, which nobody's talking about. This was supposed to make over 200 million. Well over. It was initially yeah. supposed to make 225 million. Uh, then it went down to well, it's between this and that, and then it went down to well, it's between 175 and 200, and it's now at the lower end of the projection. And, and, and I'll tell you, man, they always fucking lowball their projections because they want it to exceed them. Exactly. Being yeah. able to say it, it went way above our projections, well, that's a great thing to use in your market, and so the, it it didn't even exceed that. Like they consistently lowered their projections, and it still came in at the lower end of that. This is this movie is not going to do well. This is going to perform like uh, multiverse of madness. Yeah, and, and for think. anybody who's listening, who's like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" It's making loads of money. It's like nowhere near as much as Disney need it and want it to. That's the point. Yeah, it's making yeah, lots of money, right. sure. But do you know how much this thing costs? <laughs> like, it costs more than yeah, Black yeah. Panther. It didn't do as well as Black Panther, and that was in 2018 money without adjusted for inflation. It's way behind if you adjust for inflation. And it's, it's one of the biggest hits. Like, and it won't have the is, legs. This is a 200 million dollar movie, isn't it? They don't it have roughly. Iron Man and Cap anymore. Like this is Black Panther is one of the biggest hits now. It's supposed to be. Uh, he needs to yeah. carry. Well, I say he. Obviously, uh, it's now. Her. she needs to carry it i guess because right. uh, uh to uh double back on what you were saying then gary it's like oh what a waste for namor it's like what a waste for every character in this universe what an absolute waste well it, for sure it's been fantastic because she was just an annoying fucking sidekick <laughs> she now, to be. like suddenly yeah. she's like fucking main eventer it's like yeah you do not deserve this shit at all so how, does with the budget, uh, how does he with a budget actually went like with a budget that big you'd expect there would be some set pieces or some scenes that would linger in the imagination or collectively capture the imagination but there wasn't really anything on that scale yeah no. but isn't that the same thing that happened with rings of power where did all that money go to i mean we just discovered that they're bribing brazilians in order to watch rings of power it's like hey here's 30 reals coupon with ifood if you'll watch rings of power can, on prime can i can i put this into context right so black well sorry wakanda forever cost 250 million dollars to make so they probably sort of a billion dollars to you and me Yep. So they probably spent the same amount in marketing because that's generally the the rule of thumb. So mm. you're talking 500 million total mm. that they have spent on this movie. They are going to get about 50 percent of the gate receipts for this. Um, that's Disney's general real uh, general deal, isn't it? Maybe like 55 percent because they get a slightly better percentage. Um, so they're going to have to make close to a billion out of this to turn a profit. Mm. Uh, I don't think they're going to get there. <laughs> I don't think they are. The way it's trending at the moment, uh... Yeah. Uh, it's trending behind Thor: Love and Thunder, which had uh, didn't have as good as a weekend. So they had 145 million. I, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, give or take. And they are now uh, Wakanda Forever is now making less than Thor: Love and Thunder did the the following Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So Definitely. you don't think it's going to have legs? After the next weekend, no. I, I think. I mean, that's yeah. the big thing that's happened now with these movies, isn't it? They don't have legs anymore. Uploaded the, the big change. 
unless you're Top Gun Maverick, which had like a 31% yeah. drop in its second week, which yeah. is insane, uh, just unheard of. But that, that's what word of mouth does for you. But there's yep. no word of mouth with this movie. I, I don't nope. know of anyone who's like absolutely shouting this film's praises. Not amongst fans. Like there's there's obviously show media who are going to mm. say it's like a triumph I, and all the usual bullshit. But like that counts for nothing now. Absolutely it's been, I think, nothing. I think it's the kinda... silence has been deafening. Like in terms of commentary on this yeah. film, I see it nowhere. I think it's going to fade. Uh pretty quickly from the public consciousness. And I think one thing which is always a good tell is that there has been virtually no chatter about like a, a third film. Normally hot on the heels of something which is a success, you'd already have that chatter going about it, but it, that doesn't seem to be there. So that's always a tell. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one producer came out and said, we're not sure. We gotta see how it does. So that that's your, <laughs> we're not sure. I think they recast them and they, they try it again. I think that's, ultimately what will happen uh but no it, it's if it's trending behind thor 11 and the worst crime of this film boring boring as hell and you can't oh, very be boring yeah boring yeah. like dr strange multiverse of madness was a mess i hated it but you could argue at least like a bunch of shit was happening on screen <laughs> lots of yeah, colors slide there around was, yeah, there was entertaining stuff to yeah. look at yeah it doesn't even have that and it's long it's really fucking long Oh, two, yeah. hours, two hours and what, two hours and forty five minutes, dude. Yeah. I felt fucking haunted when Mel told me that. I was like, "No, I don't have to be in the cinema for that long." God damn I, I said this in my review, and I kid you not. I when Namor was given his uh, his backstory, I went out to the bathroom and took a shit and came back, <laughs> and like it was still going. Like the 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 backstory flashback thing was still going after that it was like what the fuck does this have to do with you killing the scientist get on with it like, I don't, like why explain your whole life story jesus from in <laughs> europe which is my favorite part. yeah 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 that's that only just occurred to me i got a few no more uh reflections um do you think it was unanimous in the writing room uh that when he would come out of the water with little sort of buzzing fluttering wings on his feet or do you think there was at least one dissenter in the writing room who kind of went, oh, eh, yeah. I'm not sure about that. It, this is a tough one to call because I know Gary can probably like confirm this, but like this is super accurate to the comics. and so That's the only accurate to... thing. His green oh. trousers <laughs> and uh, his wings on his feet. Um, like <laughs> Flapping, buzzing, there might have been a better aesthetic than that, <laughs> but that's what he's supposed to look like. I would have gone with his with his supervillain costume from supervillain team up the black costume which is way better uh and then maybe gone to the green trousers later but uh yeah i know that, that was going to be a tough sell to to to, to normies but that's why they left the helmet off thor because it's got little wings on it too which i we can i can it. take wings on a helmet more than i can them sticking out yeah. of his ankles i don't know yeah I, I, yeah, made it, one, the whole yeah, the whole fundamental premise of this movie is really fucking hard for normal people to grasp. It's like two like isolationist uh, ethno states want to hoard all the valuable materials for themselves, and they're the good guys. Like fuck yeah. off! No, they're not. Yeah, I, that, one thing yeah, I actually laughed out loud in the in the the um, the sequence of Numor's backstory. For some bizarre reason, the actor himself is kind of a little bit pudgy, which is kind of strange. But then his little junior yeah. kid version in the flashback was also a little bit pudgy, so I kind of laughed. <laughs> a little bit of continuity. It's like, yeah, this, is, this is a weird one because it's like, you know, Killmonger was, uh, he was fucking shredded, man. Like Michael B. Jordan was clearly in shape for that role and he looked intimidating. You know, he's bigger than T'Challa. You know, he was able to defeat him, like, you know, hand to hand. In a, in a fair fight. Um, you know, Namor doesn't look like he could do that. He looks like he's got a dad bod. You know, yeah. just... and, and he had to learn how to swim for the role. It's like, bruh, you couldn't find anybody who knew how to fucking swim and maybe had a <laughs> body like in Hollywood, yeah, like, really? So why were you he... so attached to this guy? And it feels, yeah, it feels like such a political move. It was just straight up. It was even swimming for him in the movie. I don't even remember. Did he do much swimming? Swimmies. Kind of flies no, but, out the water, really, doesn't he? Swim, he swims. But that's really. everything that they create today. That's why it comes across as inauthentic. You know, yeah. It, then it becomes laughable because you go, well, you could have gotten actually someone real who knew what they were doing. Hmm. I, I'm sure there is, a, like, there is somebody in Hollywood who knows how to swim. I, <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be one of them. Beach, we can find one. I, when I, heard that, when I heard that clip. I'm like, what? 
Oh, really? <laughs> okay. It, it uh, just, I would be very interested to know what the original script for this film was going to be like, because I, I understand it was written pre, like, Chadwick passing away. Hmm. Um, and I, yeah. I get the impression that Chadwick just would have played Shuri's part. Like, it was pretty much just name swapped in. And so the, the real dramatic low point of the, the movie would have been his mother dying to protect Riri Williams. Yeah, yeah. That was meant to be the real emotional heart of it. The double um, death makes no sense. I think Riri was always there to be introduced. Like, that was always going to happen. Uh, I agree with you. I think a lot of that stuff was already there, and they just repurposed it. You think they could have done a better job introducing her, though? Like, how, how, seriously, at this point, how many fucking teenage mega geniuses do we have to put oh, up with? Oh, God, yeah. It's, <sighs> it's tiring, dude. There's almost as many super genius, like, tiny lady young men as there is super tiny, organizations tiny that control ladies. everything. <laughs> a tiny like, lady super genius. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, another scene, fact, I'm not sure if you guys uh, remember it, but uh, when we first go to MIT or whatever it is, and there's like a little short scene where she's talking to this schlubby white guy who's like mumbling something about sharing in the development of the project and you remember that it's just he yeah was yeah, yeah. she basically has to help him out because he's just a dumb a white boy obviously yeah and my, and my if, thought was like they didn't need to cast an actor they could have just grabbed someone with lower self-esteem on any campus and said say these lines and it would have been about as much self-esteem and presence on the screen exactly or maybe not do it at all did that scene need to be there like it didn't <laughs> Yeah, it didn't pay off anything. Yeah. No, um, they, they literally did not introduce anything about her. She was just like, plot device, here we go. Yeah. Well, at, at least we got another... Yeah, because like, if we were to ask, like, if I was to ask any of you gentlemen, actually, like, what is Riri Williams' character arc in this movie? I don't think any of you could answer, because she doesn't have one. She doesn't have a personality. Um, she disappears for about half an hour, too, which is weird. <laughs> Oh, that is a tough question, actually. Saying we, is... that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, she has a, a, a kind of shit Iron Man suit at the beginning, and she has a really good one by the end. Really that's good all one. I can give you. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's durable and shoot rockets and stuff. I'll give you that. But, uh, yeah. Can someone help me out with that garage sequence? Because it's like a weird fever dream to me. This huge space, which has a, a beautiful classic car, uh, a motorcycle in it. Um, a mech suit you can fly around in. It was such a strange. What is that place? Uh, I, I just, I, I, if you broke into that, if you were just a random like burglar or something, like you would be fucking quids in right well, there. It's like cool. Got an Iron out. Man suit, a pristine <laughs> muscle car, a bike, yeah. all this. Considering where she was, there was a very good chance that a burglar was gonna like accidentally get in there. Because, uh, yeah, uh, no, Echo, I have an answer for you. The Disney yeah, Plus but... series will tell you all about it. Yay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Getting excited for next product, everyone. It's like each film has now become like a trailer for the next trailer. It is. Yeah. Well, it, it has been that way for what well, it feels like three or four years, though. I, uh, it's just, it's killing it. It is having its damage eventually. You know what's it, funny, though? It's like something like She Hulk actually plays into that and says, like, yep, we acknowledge as writers of this stuff that. The the Marvel movies are formulaic as fuck. They are predictable. It's like they are just written by an algorithm, and then they carry on doing it. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards. yeah. Well, it's she makes like, it even you, worse. Yeah, it's like, do you not have any self awareness? It's like, if okay, if you yourselves are recognizing this problem, you should probably do something to fix it now or address well, it at least. Remember when um she said like, oh, we have Wong and that's like Twitter armor for a week. Like it's it's a there's a kernel of truth in the fact that like if we distract you with the shiny keys, like you won't hate us for a little bit. But like they don't realize the problem. They will hate you in the long term. The the yep. sentiment about phase 4 is terrible. Even with people who like phase 4, they're like, "Ugh, phase 4 is pretty bad." Like <laughs> their their love for these products like doesn't last. It goes away straight up like after a week. It's insane. Um, the turnaround, I think, was the fastest because it, it was Moon Knight that really surprised me. People were like, "Oh, it's so good, so good, so good!" It's like literally a week later, they're like, "Moon Knight was actually awful." Egyptian <laughs> culture. It was. It actually like is this that, and I was just like, "Oh shit, wow!" And then yeah, Multiverse of Madness disappeared after like a week. It was. Yeah, it was after like the tenth Marvel series. I started like guessing, and I, I this is still a guess that they write these things based on an actual algorithm. They get people hooked in in the beginning. Uh, they kind of do something. They try to do something a little exciting in the middle of the series and try to like leave you hanging, introducing the next thing. 
yeah. uh, with the least amount of time as possible. We're going to do this weekly. We're going to, you know, uh, we're going to give it a, a tenth of a budget of what we normally give a movie or 20 20 they actually they're expensive but they're only 23 minute episodes with really long credits which I, I just think those really long credits are there for people who forget to to turn it off and that <laughs> that adds to the minutes right. watched and the way these things are judged now is not by a view by like how many people watched our show it's how many how many minutes were watched collectively which creates garbage absolute garbage they're I, trying um, to treat it like freaking youtube and these aren't 10 minute videos, you know. I completely forgot, by the way, but uh, I was going to say, oh, yeah, we have female Moon Knight as well. Oh. But we barely even had Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's weird to have female Moon Knight when it's like, well, wait, it's who's such Moon a Knight? funny thing because it's like every female led show that they produce is a female led show exclusively. There is not a single interesting male character anywhere to be found. But every male show has a female lead that's equally important, if not more important, than the male female lead. Female Loki was great. Why are you saying that? I have a yeah, I'm just saying it's it's a fucking fucking conveyor belt to like get all of this stuff out there as quickly as possible. I have a question for the panel. Who is the most interesting male character introduced in phase four? John Walker. Yeah, you're fucking right. Wow. <laughs> John Walker's <laughs> the best one and they all think he's a villain. They don't realize he's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> and, and can you name one after that? No, like absolutely not. There are none. Zero. Moon, Moon Knight had the potential to be interesting, yeah. like with the split personality and stuff, but they botched it big time. That was that was the the one hero that had enough cool factor with the comic book fans had the most potential. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They completely screwed that up from the get go. By the way, from the very first episode, uh, and that's that's the pattern with these D plus shows is like. Yeah, you'll have a somewhat mid first episode, maybe, except for Falcon and Winter Soldier, which sucked. <laughs> and, um, but oh, special and, mention to classic Loki as well. And, and, uh, and I would say classic Loki was. It frustrates me how they put him in there, though. Like it's. I, good, I understand, yeah, yeah. But like that's what he should be, like all the time. Oh, Did dude, Richard Grant, Grant would or... dominate. Yeah, Richard Grant was. Very... I, I would love that. Yeah. But yeah, like, um, well, when you look at the movies as well, like um, Ant-Man is probably a perfect example of this. It, it, it was Ant-Man when it started out, then it was Ant-Man and the Wasp, and now it's just basically the Wasp with a special guest appearance by Ant-Man. Like he, well, he's, he's got his daughter uh, with him now, right? She's, she's the, the Antlers? Yeah, it's like you've, you've got his daughter, you've got Evangeline Lilly with her hair cut in a fucking vending machine. Like every like all of these characters are now center stage. You've got fucking well, Michelle Pfeiffer as well. Like she's, you have she's two now wasps of... now. You have two wasps. And... Yeah, and it's like occasionally he might get to like pop up in the background and wave or something. Yeah, That's wait. all he's gonna get to do. And Michael like... Douglas, who's supposed to be the smartest one of them all, will be just a freaking idiot throughout the entire thing. Yeah, you have two wasps and an ant girl, right? Yeah, right. like that Michelle Pfeiffer, the daughter and the girlfriend. It's like yep. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Three women will be surrounding uh it's Scott Trinity. for most of the movie. Michael Douglas will be in it, but not as much. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... You'll probably die in this one. I'd imagine they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. amazing they got Michael Douglas in three it, It's funny because like whenever you uh, like, whenever you come up with a scenario uh, for a movie, like our like my my brief to you guys would be like, okay, think of the 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 result that's going to get the male characters out of the movie as quickly as possible and humiliate them as much as possible along the way. And that is probably what they'll do in the film. That's probably the story. And it, it happens every fucking time. And it's like, how many times do you have to do this before people just rebel against it and say, fuck off, stop, this is disgusting. Like, this isn't storytelling anymore. This is just propaganda. And it, it, it keep doing it. It's weird. Like, I don't that know what to say. Like, people keep it. it. About Kang. Like, if, if I was at the comic store with the most hardcore fans going, hey, there's going to be a big Avengers crossover event with Kang, they'll go, all right. Like, they, they won't <laughs> care. They won't care. Nobody gives a shit about Kang. It's so dumb. You got it Doctor Doom cool. out there and, and Galactus now, and you, you mess around with Kang. Did they go with Kang for the uh, the multiverse stuff? Because if you throw in Galactus and Doctor Doom now, it's going to yeah. be strange. He's because he's like a multiverse boss, right? Some kind of he's there's loads of him or whatever. 
because I'm I'm with you. I think that if There's I were on the board, I'd be like, you guys, them. you guys want to use Kang instead of Galactus and Doom, like the two people that everyone actually. Because the thing is, I don't want to see them. It's going to be horrible. They're going to be terrible. But it, like a monetary standpoint, you'd think they would want to go for Doom. Uh, absolutely. If they are settled with the sorry, yeah. Gary. Go on. If they are settled with a um a legacy male character, then the other route is to go super morose and kind of passive in the James Bond kind of mold. Uh, another, another way to kind of. Uh, <laughs> you suck, Daniel Craig. I don't care if you're watching this right now. You're a dick. <laughs> you're the worst Bond ever. That's brave. And I'm you, counting George Lazenby in that. Oh. He's got Daniel Whoa. Craig in chat, like, hey, I'm trying. I want this to escape, okay? Just post a bunch of angry face emojis. <laughs> Why you be bored? You're like, all right. Yeah, I'll give it a crack. Can't be worse than you, you dick. <laughs> no, I think uh, still Pierce Brosnan was a great bomb. Pierce and Connery. Yep. Yeah, I love Brosnan. Uh, can't, can't argue. Yeah, can't argue. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is still just a great actor. Like I think he single-handedly elevated Black Adam from, yeah, he from needs to be in absolute more shit to mediocre. <laughs> he needs to be in more things. Yeah, yeah, he could come back to Bond, just be an older Bond would be better than fucking. Oh yeah, Craig. I love Goldberg. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think it's a bad idea to have actually made a Doctor Fate solo movie. That would have been like I'd be interested to see how well it would perform, especially it with him. It would be leading. great. That's, yeah. if, for one, Doctor Fate's a cool character damn cool character and uh the, he's perfectly cast for it like and you can go as far back as world war was it world war one or two that he was a kid I world war one yeah he talks one. about all the guys going off to the, the flanders or something like that yeah oh, dude imagine the movie you could make with that mm -hmm. great but oh well <laughs> he's already dead it's like yeah. christ so well to be fair i think... never I never stopped Marvel with Black Panther. It's like she was dead as fuck. And it's like, sorry, Black Panther, Black uh, Widow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll just give her like a mid cool movie that Female nobody wanted Black to watch. Panther was dead at the end of her movie, too. She just survived the javelin through her 10 inch waist. Yeah, 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 what was say, that? She's dead on arrival in terms of like interest. Just like, yeah. who wants to see Shuri in her next adventure? It's like, I, 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 <laughs> I saw in the chat that like, in no way is uh wakanda forever underperforming it uh, it's too early to, to to either say that or not say that we will find out friday i thought, I thought it was yeah. underperforming from the projections. It, it was at the low end of projections and those projections yeah. had already been lowered in advance of, and to of be fair this. when you say the low end of projections it it's lower than the floor of their projection right it went yeah. under the floor of the projection because that is that's bad for them yeah. i mean and i think it's pretty safe to say that uh at this point, who is believing Variety and the Hollywood Reporter no. and Deadline? Like, and because they're just you, they're using Disney press releases and repeating them, not even editorializing them, like not even like well, except for maybe it's on the low end. No, they are word for word passing on Disney press releases now. So I wouldn't be taking Disney's word at face value at this point. Uh, uh, like proving they're liars. And like I said before, like what they wanted to be able to say was. Holy shit! Wakanda Forever has exceeded all of our expectations. It's blown through the roof of everything that we thought it was going to be, and it's like an absolute masterpiece of a film. Like everyone loves it, and that's not happening. No, nope. it's just not happening. The, even the critical reception has been kind of lukewarm. Um, people have dared to voice a little bit of criticism of it, which you just wouldn't have gotten with Black Panther. People were fucking terrified of that movie. Right. Nothing was gonna stop that film, but, but now it, they're just like, yeah, you know, it was okay. But it wasn't amazing. It had a few issues. The uh, the the dialogue I thought was pretty average throughout the film. I mean, they're, they're attempting to do witty repartee from time to time, and it wasn't especially witty, to be honest with you. Uh, I wrote down my favorite line of dialogue, which I want to share with you all. This is one sentence. So uh, imagine this in the script. She, uh, this is when uh, the princess is down in that grotto uh, with Namor, and he hands her a bracelet. Mm -hmm. And the line of dialogue is, uh, these are all Mesoamerican artifacts, comma, most likely 16th century, comma, have you been alive since then, comma, your mother was human, full stop. It's just like that we is... need to shovel the shit into the scene so people know. Yeah, what's going it's on. like we need to really hammer you over the head with like what's going on right now, yeah. what's the state of affairs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it looks incredible written down, believe me. Yeah. 
Jesus. And he could have just said, I am Nimur. I am 500 years old. Yeah. You know, something like that. I was born from ayahuasca and vibranium. And I think we talked about this in, on EFAP when we were going through this film, but the flashback oh, that Namor yeah. delivers and the, the narration over it is so <laughs> long and so yeah. boring. I find it hilarious because it's such a bad way to introduce a character. Like it's, it's like one of those writing 101 schools. It's like, look, this is my character. He was born here. He has this as his parents. He went there. It's like, you can't, you can't. Let's Dude, see. it should have been a prologue. It sh- uh, that all you have to do is yeah, five hundred years. Oh, <laughs> that's all you do. You do like a, a fellowship prologue. Mm-hmm. It's that easy. Uh, you can or even you have give, oh. give people give people little bits throughout the story. Yeah. You know, yep, like little pieces of information, and then you tie it all together at some point. Like that's, well, that's I, generally I mean, how hate, you would do it. I hate to say it, but Black Adam kind of did it the way you just suggested, where you get an understanding from the history book of what he was, understanding from characters and the culture from what he was, and then him being like, that ain't who I am. And then a a flashback that ties everything together reveals the truth. You're like, oh yeah, there you go. That's a way to do it. Not saying Black Adam's great or anything. I'm just saying formatting, right? It's important. It kind of gets the basic principles of writing correct. You know, as opposed to something like this. And they just so happen to be very similar characters from the comics, Black Adam and Namor. Uh, mm. As far as the look of the pointy ears, kingdoms used to be villains, you know. Well, dude, have you yeah. seen the, the the weird shit people say where they're like, Nabal was supposed to be a villain? He was a hero in this movie. And I was just like, what the fuck movie are you watching? Like, what? Oh, boy. Yeah, do that... the kill manga thing again where he's like, I'm going to kill children. Then people are like, wow, what a hero. I love him. He's like, great. I really understand him. You know, uh, really? Uh, I don't. I don't. But I also think it didn't help any for Wakanda Forever when they Disney didn't respond to that activist who was telling people, hey, if you're white, don't show up on premiere weekend. And if you do, give a ticket to a black family and condescend to them. And if you see someone going to attack them, throw your body out there. I mean, or, or when a black woman cur- criticizes the film, uh, yeet her off a of TikTok. Uh, right. That's that was good. Uh, I got uh, I got so confused because that woman was telling me I shouldn't go to Wakanda forever, <laughs> that I should just leave that to the black people to watch. And then the, the guy who wrote Bros was saying that uh, I helped tank that at the box office because I was a hetero weirdo who didn't go to see it. So I kind of get confused about what I should go see or not. <laughs> Is that Hollywood Christ. message? But that's crazy. That's exactly what I'm saying. If Disney would have stood up, it would actually have done better for them marketing-wise, don't you think? If they would have said, hey, we heard about this. No, we're, we have our doors open to everyone. Everyone, come on in. Come watch it. Yeah. Yes, somebody should have said that because if somebody would have said something to the contrary, they would have had an actor in a car uh, doing a car video uh, mm. supporting that actor. <laughs> uh, a hostage well, video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, didn't absolutely. He like, didn't he look like that, Gary? He looked like it's like they kidnapped his family and it was like taken. It's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, that every time um, they have a problem, it's like, first it was you and McGregor. The actress. Uh, <laughs> I love Tatiana Maslany. Please my save my family. <laughs> Don't kill my daughter. <laughs> it's Silent. just the way he's like constantly looking aside, like, okay, what's the cue card saying? Okay, yeah, she was the bomb. I wish I could marry her. Uh, just to somebody go back to the. Somebody the, needs to be like. More, the, oh, the no more backstory, like the tonal shift, it's like five minutes of we feel sympathy for him. We hear about his persecution, sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. And then two minutes later, uh, my plan is to kill everyone. He never yeah, I love how he just he went from like, you know, we, t- we need to kill this one scientist so that her secret doesn't get out to I have to fucking murder every human on planet Earth. It doesn't feel like in this two hour and 41 minute movie that they cut something else. <laughs> like, really the whole uh, but don't you think that it like, actually started off bad? I'm talking when they're trying to save the child. I'm like, d- didn't they have Winter Soldier in a pod? Like, didn't I remember that? They, they should have. They should have. Didn't that. they have yeah. him in a pot? I, like, I, I made a video about this. It's like, why, why didn't they call upon like some of the other Avengers? Like, maybe Doctor right. Strange could have helped out, or like right. Thor with like super advanced as Guardian technology. Like, something um, could have been done. Something Fringy brought up, I think, on, on the EFA was like, it was weird because there's this almost like she's trying to recreate the flower power thing at the beginning, right. and you can see her uh, creating it, and it doesn't work out, and then. By the end of the movie, of course, she cracks it and gets it and stuff. And it's like, but he already had flower power, right? From, from a 
So why <laughs> did it wear off? Like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, the only way I could try and rationalize it in my review was like, oh, if you get like some serious illness, like cancer, for example, it's like you need another dose. Like you've got to like reinforce it or something. Well, I, I, think I mentioned that though in a previous live stream, but like what they should have done is have him in full costume. So you're not seeing Chadwick's face and, you know, like maybe like have the shots off a little bit. So we're not like close up on it. So we're not. So we're paying proper respect, and he finds Galactus, and he know, like he went out, whatever reason he finds Galactus, and he knows he's dead. He's like, I am dead. I need to get a message back to Wakanda, right now, to save the world. And and then people don't figure out that message. Maybe not until the very end of the movie. But he goes out like a freaking Chad, and not like the way right. he, did, you know, uh, and pick any villain. I would just pick. Galactus, yeah, it's cool. Very long was saying, like, it's such a weak way to have uh, killed him as opposed to a fight. But obviously, their intention, I guess, was to reflect real life. But at the same time, like, why would you do that? Or a herald of Galactus. Chad. But that's actually one of the problems, Mahler, is that a lot of their films, they're trying to bring in. I mean, art is supposed to be timeless, right? But they keep bringing in social justice messages or even the messages from the headlines. Well, there's Which some of us. That suspension of what well, don't you understand, though, George? It's like th these things have got to reflect the world we live in today. Right. <laughs> Which is, it, it's funny because a lot of our favorite works of art oftentimes have authors that we're like, eh, don't don't look at them on Twitter. It's fine. It's fine. Don't just just take the art for what it is. Okay, <laughs> just the more disconnected from the better, the better. Okay. Well, I think um, you know there, there there's definitely. There's an idea of timeless themes and ideas that you can address with your with your art, and then there's timely themes which are very particular to a, a, an era, a, yes. like a social movement, whatever. Uh, and there's a very obvious distinction with them, and there's an obvious distinction with how you choose to bring them into your story. And what we would, um, I guess, all of us would appreciate in storytelling is those timeless ideas because right. those are things that any person from any walk of life, from anywhere on earth, could reconcile and and could identify with um whereas what you get now is ideas that uh, are particular to say california uh at, at, in current year because those are the things that are relevant to the writers and it's like that's that's not gonna that's not gonna last people aren't gonna look back on this 30 40 50 years from now and say wow that was an incredible story uh, that's just designed to appeal to the here and now and be disposed of, and then you move on to the next thing. Uh, it's a short-lived gain for no long-term benefits. But it's very um, short-sighted, don't you think, Critical? It absolutely is, yeah. But it's like I mean, they can't... And I don't know if it's like they don't care or they, they literally lack the storytelling ability to, to look beyond what's literally right in front of them. So yes, all they can the answer to that. Yes is the answer to that. They don't care and they lack the ability. But they, they, have, also, but, they, um, but they have to continue moving forward because they have to create, they, they have care. to have a bottom line though. It's part of the, uh, Chris Gore's brought this up. And I mean, people who have worked in the industry will be more familiar. The only job that matters is, especially when you're contracted, is the one right in front of you. And you're right. not, you don't give a fuck about the legacy of Marvel uh, or and, and the things the fans don't. And that's why there's so much crap out there because they're making more scripted entertainment than they ever have in history and there just isn't enough talent there isn't and now you you make it worse by not hiring on merit you're you're casting people quota you're a, yeah it, you're just fulfilling a quota it's affirmative action that's all it is uh and 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 you know what to the credit uh drinker knows this there are some people who figured that out who worked there and went shit i was just hired for my skin color and my name, I was not high, and, and and the way my name looks on the credits, not my name as in what or because work I've done, or because I specified a way to cancel Batman. That could have been why they hired me. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's bad. Yes. Should, should we should we talk a little bit about that? Actually, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a neat little segue, Mahler. So fair play. Um, not when you highlight yeah. it. Now it's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll move right into it. Fucking... Can I just chuck in one other idea about that? I was thinking about this the other day, the, the imposition of identity politics, how jarring it would be if the shoe was on the other foot. Mm -hmm. So if you have, for example, that comic that got canceled, the um, the gay Superman, mm. uh, which came out. Yes. Imagine how it would be if you had um, the equal and opposite, if you had a conservative writer 
who had like the the notion to take the character who wants to go back to his family's Kansas roots and discovers evangelical Christianity and wants to spread that message. Uh, everyone, like liberal people in Hollywood would have a fit. They'd have conniptions if that was the case. But that's literally the equal and opposite. So it shows how jarring that identity politics is. Well, that, that's both. the thing. It, all, it only ever swings one way. But like, I would argue that that storyline that you've just described has every right to exist just as much as uh, any kind of left-leaning um, yeah, yeah, liberal absolutely. kind of uh, idea. Well, you know, they're all just, yeah, they're all just ideas that you can present to your audience. It's up to them if they want to consume it, if they want to believe into it or whatever. But um, the, the prevailing wisdom in Hollywood has been like, no, we only can present you with one idea and one, one set of ideas coming from one specific direction because that's the only correct way of thinking about the world now. Well, that's uh, what... And, Thomas Sowell said in 1995, and he keeps saying, is you have these people in Hollywood who have decided to go, if you will just do what we tell you to do, the world will be perfect. They want to control the culture. Yeah. I mean, that, that's their, yeah. their bottom line. I mean, that's how we end up with it. Yeah. But this is why this stuff is, is interesting, because, you know, what is it that they say? Like, politics flows downstream of culture. Like, it's a reflection of cultural... Um, beliefs and cultural norms. It's basically like whatever way the winds are blowing, politics will realign itself to to work with that. And so, movies, stories, you know, TV shows, whatever, like that is the thing that helps to shape the culture that we live in. So it's kind of important that you get a balance there. And yes. I'm not like, then this isn't me sitting here saying like, well, it needs to be right wing instead of left wing. No, it just. It needs to be fair and balanced. There needs to be a, a diversity of uh, of well, opinions and ideas. Good. Yeah, it needs to be good, good quality art. as well. Yeah, artists know this. Artists know that it's better for art. Like you know, thankfully, Quentin Tarantino just came out and said we're in the worst era of film ever, which I could not agree more with. He's fucking so right. Fucking right. Yeah. <laughs> Controversial. He's just stating a flat out objective fact. Dude, I love that because like we've been we've been told for so long, like you guys have been over dramatic. It's one of the best times for film. Okay, blah blah blah. And it's like, dude, Quentin Tarantino just said it. All the yeah. other fucking directors, the legacy directors, they've been pissed for years now. And yeah, we, it's like and if you don't want to listen to us, fine. But like these guys, at least, have earned your trust to some extent. Yeah. And even they are saying this is fucking shit. This era that what we live it, in. Uh, this is going to be looked back on by future generations as a time of fucking woe. Because it what is, is it deserves that that criticism. It does. Martin do Scorsese said that comment about uh, about films. What was his comment? Martin Scorsese's film about like uh, their oh, like food or Marvel is basically like anti-art. Like, anti -art, basically, like, they're roller coasters. They're not yeah. like true art. So if you got <laughs> Tarantino and Scorsese on the same page, that's kind of like. Uh... Well, and uh, and Coppola said, so I think yeah. he shot on it as well. That, dude, just find a director that you know and love from you know decades ago, and they've probably shot on Marvel <laughs> if they've even yeah. watched it. Well, Michael Mann, yeah. Michael Mann has always said Hollywood operates on the simple principle of they have to live in denial to not know what they know. They have to walk around and go, this is not reality. Yeah. Oh, and they do it. They're really good at it. Uh, very, very convincing, <laughs> George. No. Uh, I think, you know, like occasionally when we get something artistic, like everything everywhere all at once or the Northmen, it's like it's just that much better because we were surrounded by so much shit. Uh, you know, and, and it feels like we are coming out of it and I don't know where the new stuff, I, I think it fragments personally. I don't think it's going to be centralized in Hollywood anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I think you, you, you made a video about this just recently and you made the point that Warner is probably going to do best out of all of this because they have realized first before anyone else that they have to change tactics, uh, and they have to abandon this woke politically motivated activist garbage and they have to get back to making movies that actually people want to see uh, and disney are taking longer to to reach that conclusion um you know all the, the the other major studios are taking longer but they will eventually get there it's just a question of how much money they have to lose before they realize it yeah you got to hit bottom it's kind of like uh, uh the principles of alcoholism you know you got four alcoholics Three of them are functional. One of them is just a flaming disaster. But that guy hits bottom, and that guy gets sober and has a longer and more meaningful life because he figured it out because he hit bottom. And that's where Warner Brothers could be if they could pay off their billions of debt. 
Right. Uh, and the one way to do that is like, hey, let's make a Superman movie. Maybe people like still like this Harry Potter thing. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Do people like Superman? <laughs> it's like, do, do, do they want to see? Do they want to see a race swapped Superman? Eh, probably <laughs> no. not. No. <laughs> oh, didn't, just... that, didn't that die on the vine with J.J. Uh, Abrams and his black Superman? The, the last thing I read about this is it's still apparently in the works, oh, but like right. nobody's talking about it really. And Dude, I, I, I die like female to bear. Pirates of the Caribbean died. Yeah, it's going to go the yeah. same way as fucking uh, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy. It will just get quietly shelved. <laughs> and quite frankly, we have a great female pirates movie, the thumbnail for this particular live stream. One of the better. Yeah, it's, that, that's a good one. <laughs> good one. It's also the most expensive. Uh, at the time, it was the most expensive porn ever made. The so. storytelling well, is like, just fantastic. The character work, uh, oh, the themes. Mm -hmm. The, the production value shine through. Like, I, I had a fantastic time watching do, that. Do you know how much money they put into the most expensive porn ever made? It was like a couple of million bucks. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's, it. That's pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah. for, the return, for a porn what movie. That? What were the returns? Yeah. Did it get a wide release? <laughs> Did it oh, yeah. I, I a wide release. Very, very well. That, it, was, it was early 2000s. It did very well. What was it? Uh, 20 Girls, One Cup? What was it? uh oh, 20 girls one ship basically uh yeah hey, 20 girls one booty one booty. If, if we'd had more time for this like plan in this stream i could have tried to get one of the actors in for this it would have been amazing <laughs> get bella donna or whatever her name was <laughs> uh but yeah like it, it does uh, it does bring him into something that i wanted to talk about so yes tragically gentlemen and like uh doff your caps in in sympathy for this one uh, yes, the female-led Pirates of the Caribbean reboot, according to Margot Robbie, is dead in the water. Uh, and the quote from her <laughs> says, I guess they don't want to do it. <laughs> well, yeah. Strange. So what can I say, Margot? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The most beautiful thing, though, is that the screenwriter, for, the screenwriter they had for that Pirates of the Caribbean movie is also the screenwriter for the, the Batgirl uh, the Batman Warrior. Birds of Prey. Batman. Birds of yeah, Prey. Yeah. I think she so did. She did the, oh, the, the Batgirl one that got shelved, that they didn't even release it. She was also the screenwriter for that. So she's having a bad year. That screenwriter. Yeah. Good. Uh, but I mean, this is, this is, it, you know, it's a funny thing, right? Because if, say, their tactic had been, <laughs> right, we're going to produce more Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, but we're also going to do like this spin-off thing with with uh, with a female led one, and who knows? Maybe there'll be like a team up at some point. Okay, cool. I can get behind that. But if you're going to say no, we're going to reboot the whole thing. This is how we're going to lead the franchise going forward. It's not going to work. No fucking way. If it doesn't have Johnny Depp in it, I'm not fucking interested. Nope. But I think Depp's going to come back. I think they're going to eventually turn around to go to him. I know he said he's not going to, but I think if they put a big enough payday. Yeah, you put enough big enough paycheck. Yeah, people will do we it. Just, so I think the culture wants that. Everyone wants the catharsis of Johnny Depp. Just no, the one, more, one more ride in that role. I think. You see Disney that. bringing him back? Like, I, I just can't. I can't see some more on like Bob Chapek taking a risk. Bob Chapek and taking a risk of bringing Johnny back. It would. It would do well. You bring uh, Gore Verbinski back to direct it and right, right. Uh, the original writers and have him do another. Like, it would easily be a hit. Uh, but Bob. The underdog story. Yeah, Bob Paycheck is not. That does, that's, dude is is a coward. He's a fracking coward. That's why he's still the CEO of Disney and will remain so because he's a puppet for the board right now. And he will he will not do something like that. But no does way. the board not want to make money now? Like, is this not the direction they're going where they're saying, like, look, we're here to make money as a business. We're not here to pander to your fucking woke activism anymore. You would hope so. You would hope so. But I, I don't think Disney's hit bottom quite yet. I think they still think they're on their mission. Uh, this is the same board that's that al that's allowed uh, the identity politics to just run yeah. rampant. The, the not-so-secret gay agenda. They're about to have another bomb uh, animated film that's filled with the not so secret uh, gay agenda that's being marketed to children, small children. Strange world. Yeah. So uh, that's not gonna that's not gonna do well here or around the world. Surprisingly enough, when you're marketing it to small children, 
So, uh, <laughs> well, it's horrible. You have those two kids that they're trying to play off of to get the kids. But except for the fact that, especially now that you have the CCP has, they say temporarily shut down Shanghai Disney, which makes about 1.5 billion a yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they implemented that new policy, which is what it's called. It's the dynamic zero beer bug policy. You cannot have in your business one person who pops positive at any time to be open. So that's gone. They're having, they've lost, what is it? They lost, what was it? 10% of their customers for ESPN, their subscribers. So they're not doing well. And then they just raised the rates. They announced, Chapek announced yesterday, they're going to raise the uh, Disney the park, park rates. No. I mean, I this is the thing. I'm not like fully across the park stuff, but I know like Chapex changes have gone down horribly yep. with, with like real park aficionados because yep. he's basically saying like, we're going to charge you more and give you less. One hundred eighty-nine dollars strategy. Yeah, one hundred eighty-nine. It was. I read it was for ten-year-olds and older. The average price was one hundred and nine dollars starting. So he said, coming in two after Christmas, it will be one hundred and twenty-nine to one hundred and eighty-nine dollars per park per person day. per park per per day right. admission. That's not including you know all the parking extras so on. Yeah, well, average that's, person that's, is going to pay that. Yeah. Yeah. Then not. It's the same thing. And then if you like, you want to have lunch in the park. That's probably another hundred dollars for like you <laughs> yeah. and your family. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's expensive for the good ones. I just went to Universal, which was awesome, by the way. Oh, it was. It was expensive. It was not cheap. And Disney is twice as much, and it's and it's twice as confusing. And like Universal, I had a great time though. It felt like it was worth it. And they're starting to make inroads and in, and in, in beating disney world and if disney world keeps going the way they are it's going to go it's going to get much worse and good good i could not be happier i hope disney goes down in flames i don't want them to turn anything around just burn at this point and maybe some of these properties will go to somebody else who will, who will do something right by them that's, that's the point you're at gary when they go announcing she hulk season two you're like yes <laughs> this oh. is the way to go marvels can't wait it's on my calendar i'm marking the days till the marvels comes out oh uh, that that <laughs> Fucking movie, man. That's going to be Both a gold mine. Mine. <laughs> It's just like the memes will be glorious. <laughs> but do you really believe they're going to make Brie Larson the like their Tony Stark? No, no. no. That, that was the plan like three or four sales. years ago, yeah. but like they've they've abandoned that long time ago. I don't think she even wants to do it anymore. What? What? idiot would assume that could ever work like i read it last week they were saying that she's gonna supposedly in the running again to be their new face because they don't they, have they, one. they talked about that when the movie came out uh and that was yeah but the comics have been trying to force captain marvel on us for quite some they, time right around the time disney took over because marvel <laughs> wanted their own superman and they wanted it to be a girl that's exactly why they changed uh miss marvel to captain marvel miss marvel carol danvers was a very likable character i liked her Oh well. I collected her comics, yeah, so much. <laughs> Mechanically speaking, there is some sense, as in she's hyper, super duper powerful, and she like flies all around the cosmos. It's like, okay, this, you know, maybe it makes sense. She would have some level of leadership, but I think the only one that makes sense at this point, if I was on the board, is like, it's probably got to be Doctor Strange, right? He's got to be the one to bind everything together because mm -hmm. he's and he's he's a good actor. You got plenty of movies. He's at least he got involved with the previous Avengers, so you got something there to carry the torch if you're desperately trying to rescue this absolute train wreck crashing into the well, abyss, the next but... leader is going to be captain black american falcon but he sucks now he is horrible <laughs> he destroyed oh, he is like a, a well, you've got to do here. better mauler you've got to step up <laughs> I mean, that's what reminded me of Wakanda Forever was as Falcon. It felt like a BLM pride parade. It's like everybody with a raised fist, everybody else kneeled down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you Bob, need to do better. Do better. Uh, Bob, Bob Chapek in, in his memo to the staff talking about all the layoffs they were going to have, um, he had the strange line where it wouldn't affect Disney's uh, unrivaled synergy machine. I was just I was gonna I was gonna quote this actually because I do have his memo here. Like human being would say. Kevin, is that the Kevin AI? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. So it's just a let, let me let me read out just a couple of sentences of his memo that he put out to all of his uh, managers and stuff. So uh, there's a loads that comes before this, but like I'll get to the relevant bit. So it's first we have undertaken a rigorous review of the company's content and marketing spending. Uh, working with our content leaders and our teams. While we will not sacrifice quality or the strength of our unrivaled synergy machine, we must ensure our investments are both efficient and come with tangible benefits to audiences and the company. We're limiting headcount additions through a targeted hiring freeze. 
Hiring a small subset of the most critical positions will continue, but other roles are on hold. Uh, we are reviewing our SG&A costs and have determined that there is room for improved efficiency, which basically means we're going to lay off a fuck ton of people, as well as an opportunity to transform the, the organization to be more nimble. So yeah, basically, if if I was Chapek, right, and I wanted to get rid of these fucking activist arseholes that have infested my company, I couldn't have asked for a better time and opportunity than this. This would be the time to do it. Because you've got the perfect excuse. You can say, look, times are tough. The economy's contracting. Uh, people can't afford to, to spend as much on our products. We need to become more lean and efficient. And I'm sorry. We love you all, but we're going to have to let a few people go. And it just so happens that the people we're letting go are the most loud and obnoxious activists on social media. What can you do, eh? Yeah. Just that's the way it goes. But you know, that's have the sack for it. Uh, Netflix that, did it. Netflix did it, and yeah. we'll see. We'll see if it pays off. It seems like it has. Uh, there's still some legacy stuff. Uh, Witcher like should just be canceled. Oh, just be canceled. oh that show's fucked. I, I done. think. Yeah, I think it's it's cooked. They'll they'll do the uh, fourth season and it'll be done. If Will they, they even do it though, or, or that's season... a good question because uh, they have that prequel coming out, and that nobody's going to watch that. Like, who want, who in the hell wants to see? Some woke identity politics filled prequel without Geralt. Uh, that's everything Lauren Hisrich wants. She should have been fired after season two. She should have been fired after season one. She was clearly fucking incompetent to tell a yeah. story. Yeah. But, like, yeah, my prediction is like season three ratings will be in the gutter because nobody's going to watch it because they know Cavill's leaving and they, sh they know the show's on life support anyway. Uh, and the showrunners will probably say, well, the the ratings are so terrible there's not even it's not worth our time even financially making season four and it'll get bad girl and, and it'll and just they get cancel fucked. stuff they announce all the time they like that happens all the time announce doesn't mean shit anymore in hollywood yeah. uh you know we just talked about the Rian johnson trilogy that's been announced for god uh the, the day it was announced if you go now there's kids going into kindergarten going in the first grade from the time it was announced so yeah it's been a while it's been a minute yeah oh that that is fucking hilarious like that is one of those things it's a face saving measure where they can't say like well nobody fucking likes ryan johnson so we can't <laughs> do his trilogy so we're just going to quietly not talk about it and uh and people will gradually forget about it but like I think even recently he did an interview where he was saying like I, I really want to direct another Star Wars film, <laughs> but with no mention of his trilogy, and it's like take the fucking hint, man. Nobody wants you. Like you're a disaster for Star Wars. You made the most unpopular Star Wars movie of all time. Uh, be content with destroying that franchise by yourself and piss off. It was an that impressive is. job, honestly. It, it really is. is. It's historic how, how how many bad decisions were made within two movies. Like historic, like all time Hollywood bad decisions that will be remembered for, till the end of time. That's your legacy. Books well, will. It I, I still could get comparisons. People ask me like, "Is God of War Ragnarok the TLJ of God of War?" And I'm like, "Still, that is TLJ's <laughs> reputation. It's like, did it destroy the franchise? Like, I was hoping that would happen in a dictionary sort of sense. What does TLJ mean? It's like destroyer of franchise." It kind of does, you know. It's I the think perfect opposite to the Empire Strikes Back, which is considered, you know, the peak, the elevation of the, yes. of the trilogy, like the inverse. Yeah. <laughs> but then yeah. Ryan, like in some way, sees his movie as being comparable to Empire. Like his his rationale was like, well, people criticized Empire when it first came out, and now it's regarded as the greatest Star Wars movie ever. So that's that clearly going to happen to me. Is like, such a fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> All, we couldn't stop talking about it. We couldn't stop watching it. It was the greatest thing we'd ever. So we're like, "What the? What? what the, no way! They did the Hansel were frozen. And they ended what? That's great! You know, it was great. It was great. We were we were buying all the toys. That that is like stop with that fucking narrative. A couple of critics didn't like it because critics didn't like sci fi shit back then. They didn't like Spielberg movies. They didn't like George Lucas movies. That was pretty freaking normal back then. Remember, these are the same idiots who chose Chariots of Fire over. Fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark is oh, best yeah. picture. Annie Hall over Star Wars is best best picture. These are retards, and they're retards then, and and they're retards now. That that was never a narrative. That's bullshit. Empire Strikes Back was insanely popular, insanely fucking popular. 
But did you believe his excuse? Did any of y'all believe his excuse when he said, when Johnson said he likes to create films that half the audience loves it and half the audience hates it? Or do you think that was the same thing that Marvel did when they said, well, She-Hulk was, was this way because we were trolling the fans? I, I think in Johnson's case, he probably does love it. I think he gets off on the fact that like people fucking hate his movie and like he knows that like it can never be unmade, it can never be undone, it's always gonna be there just pissing people off. And mm. yeah, I think whatever whatever personality he's got, whatever drives him, that just seems to give him energy and he seems to love it. I guess if you um, the same reason him. that yeah, I was yeah, just gonna I, say it's I, the same. It's the same reason. Like when he gets interviewed about it, and it's like, would would there be anything you would change about it? Anything you could improve upon? Um, do you think any of this criticism is valid? He's like, nope, nope, not valid. It's perfect. So he's, yeah. perfect so he's passive aggressive, basically. He's like, yep, I've stuck this out there forever. It's it's Where'd pretty we... much yeah, and I think that I've seen people with that exact same mentality on social media where they've they've been arguing with someone about that film, um, and they don't like the person that they're arguing with, and they've just pretty much said well the fact that it pisses you off just makes me more determined that it's like the greatest movie ever made and i thought okay cool if, if that's your rationale for liking a film fair enough i can't argue with it right no you if, can't uh, argue with, you can't argue with the insecurity because that's what it is because mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if you've literally divided your audience you might as well call yourself a provocateur you might as well much. But, like and maybe that's what he believes but like i think somebody i believe that somebody who is truly secure and a grown-ass man can go, you know what? Yeah, you know, I didn't pull some stuff off. I'll do better next time. You know, just some humility. It plays way better, for one, if you actually care. But they don't because ego, uh, nothing trumps their ego. It's, 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 it's more valuable to them than money is their image. That's, that's a, been a Hollywood right. thing forever. Uh, and then when, once in a while, when you see a filmmaker just come out because they really just love film, you know, and they go, you know, what? Yeah, maybe I kind of messed up on that one. I'll try better next time. People like that person. Better. Joel Schumacher comes out later and goes, you know what? I fucked up Batman. Sorry. And people love yeah. it. It's, it's great. Well, when Tim Miller even it. said, like, yeah, yeah, kind of like, you know, Dark Fate was a, a real fucking mess and I shouldn't have done it. Hey, yeah. Gary, <laughs> Gary Schumacher I mean, walked so that Nolan could run. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like that. I mean, could you imagine if, I mean, you yeah. <laughs> had. I mean, you have J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. They refuse to apologize. They just keep saying, oh, next season will be canonical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know it can be. But the point is, is like, if they could you imagine what kind of credibility? Well, I don't think they'd have any. But if they actually stood up and go, we had a vision. We made a mistake. We didn't follow Tolkien. We're going to do better. We're going to, this time, scrap all our ideology, scrap our vision. And we're going to go forward to following the professor's art. I'll tell you one thing I do I can say publicly is is one one of them is not a bad guy. One of them is a bad guy. <laughs> one of them is not a bad guy. One of them is a bad guy, and they are both way way uh, like over their head. They they don't have the talent to take this on, and they never did. And it was never intended for them to be the showrunners at right. first. It was a possibility. They were considered. Uh, they were considered for writing, but they were ne like things got out of hand quickly. So what I can say is like Rings of Power did not start out as a piece of shit. Like there was people involved who wanted to make a proper adaptation of Tolkien. But there is a ton of factors aside. But ultimately, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay cannot fix this problem because they don't have the talent. No, so that's don't. why they don't. And that's why, you know, Lindsay Weber comes in and J Jar Jar Abrams, the whole fucking thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden I've got people contacting me going, you're, 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 you're on the right track with this one. You're on the right track with this one. I mean, and you they, are. And they want to tell me a little more. So it, it's, it's interesting. The anatomy of this failure is the anatomy of every single, uh, that's why it's not our first rodeo. We've all watched this over the last few years. It's the same failure we saw with the last Jedi. It's the same failure we saw with Star Trek, Star Trek. They, they, <laughs> They license out their 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 convention because they want it to be like Star Wars celebration. They do one convention in in Chicago and it gets canceled the next fucking year. It's canceled, so they took it away from Vegas to do their own thing and they fucking cancel it the next year. Why? Because nobody cares anymore. Because you destroyed the franchise. Doctor Who has to go ba basically back to their modern George Lucas uh, and their modern Luke Skywalker equivalent, 
and it didn't like it didn't even move the fucking needle because there's a point where apathy kicks in. So that's already kicked in for Rings of Power. They know it. They're completely shitting their pants. They don't know what to do because they can't fire J.D. Payne and Patrick McCain because that would be admitting failure. So they're just going to burn the money. Oh, and the Tolkien estate, they they share their fucking sh- – that they have a huge portion of the blame on this. Oh, yeah. If, yes. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. But that's because of Simon, though. That's because of Simon. You remember that he has chip on his shoulder about his about J.R. Yep. talking about his grandfather, and he goes, he wants to shine on his own. Remember, this is someone who said, I am not a writer. I'm an attorney. I was a barrister for 20 years, but I wanted to get my hand at writing. He could not get published under his pen name. So after seven years in my research, he then went to Harper Collins and said, hey, I'm, I'm Tolkien. I'm a grandson. And they're like, well, well, no, why not? <laughs> I got audio of Simon saying uh, Peter Jackson stuck too close to the books. Yes, you're right. Gary. <laughs> he, said, he said he stuck too. He did in an interview on. with BBC. <laughs> I've got they, more they, on they, it later. But this, this is the thing that blows my mind, like with the Tolkien estate. It's like, did you not make enough money from like the, the <laughs> decades of book yeah. sales and the Peter Jackson trilogy and the Hobbit trilogy? Like, <laughs> fucking hell, how much more do you need? Did you have to like literally dig up the corpse of your, your grandfather and ass rape him uh, in order to get more money? Because that's what you're doing, basically. Now, he's. Cool. Um, not like not evil, just incompetent and um, possibly a little bitter. That that's oh, right. yeah. and he's the one in control right now. It, it's I hard heard... to be. It's hard when you're the untalented, fucking unwanted grandson <laughs> <laughs> of the family. <laughs> well, he's got four interviews, and in one of them, he states he goes, he was, and I couldn't believe he stated this in the interview. He's like, I was tired of living in the shadow of my grandfather, and I'm like, yeah. Well, you, you know what, Simon? Didn't... Maybe you should have been a better fucking writer. Maybe you should have been born smarter or more talented. You dick. Right. I hope you're proud of yourself now, because this is on you. The thing is, is I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, is that he actually has a contract in play with Amazon to make one of his mystery books into a show for Amazon. I can that would be out. seen by literally dozens out. of Please, people. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I can find out. That that totally sounds believable. I, I, I've been trying to, I've been trying to, I've been trying to confirm it, but yeah, he's supposed to have, it's, uh, I'll tell you, I think it's called Mystery of Egypt. No, I'll tell you the name in a second. Yeah, and the other, the other heirs... Like they could give a fuck. They just want. Oh, but they're they're trust fund babies. Did you see them all at the London premiere? There's like yeah. twenty of them. And well, like, there's you know, one. There's one heir who like flamed out at uh, makeup effects and costuming. Got like a, a you know got a got a job on his name. Did it for a couple of years and he went. Oh my god, it's work. It's hard. I'll just yeah. you know like yeah. I really. I, you know, I can't stand people who just like I can't get out of the shadow of my father who gave me this comfortable life and all these mansions and cars. Yeah. I have to work every day. Jet, yeah. Um, but here's a question: Why? I know they have a five-year contract with the estate, a five-season contract with the estate. Why do? You, how do you move forward now that you've eviscerated your audience? There, there is. I mean, even normies aren't watching it. Yesterday, it was released that it was in Parrot Analytics. Number five, <laughs> the final the season ends up at number five. How do you how come do you back with it? no? Well, how do you come back with no audience without going back to the drawing board and saying we fucked up? Hard. You reset. have to. You have to do. It. You have to go back to the drawing board. You have to make changes behind the scenes, not do it publicly, but you have to then produce a fantastically written second season and hope that word of mouth is going to get you through. Okay. I well, think the other was, issue there was that uh, the the first season they had at least the sense of novelty and, and intrigue for the first two or three episodes before that sharp drop off in the ratings, and they won't have that intrigue and novelty no. at the start of the second. So I, I, I think we're really starting on the back foot. I, I think something like House of the Dragon is probably the best example I can draw on, where you had a lot of disadvantages going into that show. You know, the the terrible end to Game of Thrones, the fact that people are pissed off at George for not finishing Winds of Winter. Uh, the the general apathy towards like that that Game of Thrones um, you know universe, um, I, but they they produced something that ultimately was well written, well acted, had a good cast, uh, and it drew people in, and the ratings went up mm. episode on episode as more and more people got bought into it. So it proves it can be done, but it relies entirely on quality. When everything else is against you, you have to stand on your own merits. Right. Um, but then that is going to rely on them bringing in really good writers. 
to, to do this show. And I don't think they will. No. And and they've got everything going against them right now. Like, this is even going against House of the Dragon, which uh, incidentally is really good on its second viewing when you're binging it. It's really good. <laughs> um, but uh, is is the two-year wait that, that we have to wait for every of these pre- prestige series now, which you didn't with Game of Thrones. Uh, it's going to absolutely kill Rings of Power. Like, yeah. there's you have no chance. They have zero chance of retaining uh, half of their audience in two, two and a half years from that dog shit. Absolutely correct. Plus, because the, yeah. when season two comes around, it'll be like, oh, I can't wait to... Wait, who was in this? Who was even... <laughs> <laughs> no, I but think was... of... <laughs> but think about it, it's even worse than that right when it comes out not only does it go head to head with house of the dragon season two but war of the rohirrim comes out at the same time so it's going to be a direct comparison because they can't say well house of the dragon is something different they're going to have tolkien property and going against you know amazon's butchering of tolkien oh and what did go, that um, say in a little uh, sorry Mahler, in just a one ahead. little one-off sentence we still have the distribution rights to lord of the rings End yeah. of story. <laughs> I love um, it. On House of the Dragon, by the way, it's like the most, if they manage to maintain quality, the most interesting season would probably be any other than one, because one is a big <laughs> setup. And yet, yeah. uh, I think this was, it was a pretty genius plan. They probably knew that, that they have to set loads of groundwork, introduce loads of characters. It's like, so like, how do we bind everyone to it? It's like the series was clearly like the heart of season one. They worked really hard. They got a really good actor. Keeps us all in. Season two is going to begin with the beginning of the war. Like, imagine the levels of hype, the trailers, all the promotional stuff, and people are yeah. going to start to forget Game of Thrones. They'll just be like, "Nah, House of the Dragons, cool. I like it. It's, just, it's nothing to do with Game of Thrones anymore." Which was what they had to do. Really difficult. Meanwhile, Rings of Power, you're coming off Lord of the Rings. You've got all the everything's working for you, and you've burned it. Absolutely burned it. You got to restart again with season two. Like you said, I imagine they'll get possibly half the viewership of the premiere for season two episode one is uh, episode one for season one yeah and you remember jennifer sulky oh sorry gary no i, I just, just uh, <laughs> what i was saying was jennifer sulky had yeah. stated before it came out that they would consider success to be one of three things they win a bunch of awards you know or the series and this is one that stuck out at me it would have to be number one for six months after season one finished i was like yep not gonna happen it's already not happening. Yeah. It didn't happen on its second week, third week. <laughs> so uh, you're right. Uh, I, I was told uh, – I, I didn't catch that part, but I'd love to catch that quote. Yep. But I was told by three people that, th- no, this thing needed to be Stranger Things. It has – like as much money as we spent, Bezos was expecting Stranger Things, Game of Thrones. That's what he wanted. You're going to see House of, the Dra- House of the Dragon pulled Game of Thrones back into the top ten – it did. So, wow. like, you're going to see House of the Dragon, like, hanging, hanging around in the top 20 for a long time. For a long time. And that's what Stranger Things does. And Cobra Kai did for, a, like, it's been charting for months after it's it's over. Uh, imagine how much better it would be doing if it was weekly. Right, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Could you still believe, stuff? Gary, that, that, that Cobra Kai beat Rings of Power in the ratings? That's still hard for me. to. I know it's Amazon's, but just the thought that they have Tolkien's name attached to it, that it beat it. I know. I mean, like after watching it, I love it. Uh, I think yeah. it's great. Uh, but yeah, the, no, that like you have Tolkien's name attached to something, uh, and you fail this bad, uh, you should never work again. Yes, but you yeah. know, Kathleen Kennedy should never work again. I don't care what <laughs> she's accomplished. She didn't put Han, Luke, and Leia together in a scene. Anybody wait, involved? Wait, wait, Gary, you mean you're work? not excited for Indy Five to see him get replaced uh, by fucking dead-eyed a- simpleton <laughs> like the Phoebe Waller Bridge? <laughs> Like, is she even a thing anymore? Like, she was a popular, what, three years ago with Fleabag? Yeah, Fleabag was popular, Fleabag. like, a few years ago. She's yeah. done fuck all since then. Yeah. Uh, just a note well, on she, how she's the, the robot dragon. in Solo, didn't she? So, how about that? I, I just... It, it's, it's weird, because it's like, <laughs> if you were to make a meme of Kennedy, like, what, what would her input to any film be? It would be pretty much... Why don't we make this character a woman? Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's literally what she does every single fucking time. Like, she's a walking meme. And she doesn't care. It's just like, yeah, that's all I can think of. That's my only creative input to any film. Let's just make this character a woman now. Great. Genius, Kathleen. How's that worked out for you so far? How, how was the Star Wars sequel trilogy? Didn't work too great, did it? Just didn't care. Doesn't care. Just keep doing it. <laughs> That's all you got. Um, Just yeah, I know from House of the Dragon. Um, 
I just loved how that series could, from beginning to end, this, the beautiful symmetry, almost like this blooming, uh, to start with a very um, controlled small set of characters and things, to get to the end with this dense, intricate, multi-generational world. Just the, the parabola of that, the, the symmetry to get from that to that was so smooth, so sophisticated, and it just, you know, restored my faith in, in watching shows. <laughs> well, I think oh, it's old. I'm agree. ready for season two right. already. Yeah, yeah, I agree oh, with you. You're all hinged on having those those characters that you formed an emotional bond with, because you have yeah. these big time jumps, which could lose a lot of viewers when you're, you're suddenly jumping 10 years in the future or whatever, but mm. because you're invested in them, you care about them, it's like, okay, I want to see where these people are going to be 10 years down the line. And I'm interested to see what, what the situation they're going to be in now. That's the, the strength of that show. It's the writing of those characters to make you care about them. That and allows it to move through these big gulfs of time. Alice and Renera weren't like at the head of armies fully armored out there in a pitch yep. battle. <laughs> a well, is it, but know? isn't it interesting though? Because when you yeah. see them give birth and the, the fucking shit that they have to go through, like the, the pain, you know, the the you know um the the blood and guts basically routine of it yeah of it all um that strength of character to to endure something like that um uh, and and pick yourself up afterwards and be able to carry on like because you know as you find out later in the series like they they have stillbirths they have all these kind of things happen to them um that gives you so much respect for that character that they endure that and uh, that's because that's part of their life. They can't mm -hmm. avoid it. They can't. Uh, they can't stop it. There it is. Uh, and it, like you say, it's not about their ability to swing a fucking sword at someone and just be a girl boss. It's real, kind of the experience of of being a woman in a society like that. Right. Uh, but you you respect them for their ability to get through that. Uh, that's an interesting thing, but it's so rare in Hollywood now because they don't want to show women actually being women. Women. Oh. They want to be. The, they want them to be men, um, but they want to simultaneously chastise men for being men. So it's it's a really weird thing they're trying to push now. But this show got it right. It's like it understands actual humans, it, which is a very rare thing now. Well, with, the, with the dialogue, like after Rings of Power, with its pseudo profound attempts at being grand. And then you watched uh, House of the Dragon. The dialogue was uh, precise, um, economical, and intensely sophisticated. And the contrast was was amazing for that because you let the characters express it rather than having this Dude, pseudo. It, it left room for nuance. It, it like yeah, yeah. You, you, God, it's like and we Mahler, we were breaking down like what did they mean? And like there was multiple meanings. And you know, it's, it, it, yeah. It's yeah. like an inverse because you say like we, we sit there going like oh it could mean this could mean that what does it mean the inverse of that is the rings of power reaction which by the way if I had written it and I saw this reaction I'd be fucking pissed at myself with fear like if the whole audience went what does that mean <laughs> when they say so like oh you're like a boat and a rock and a blah blah and then the whole audience <laughs> is like, oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> as as a writer you must be like oh shit like they don't even know what I'm talking about like fuck it should have come in the first draft. I, I still think, think the writers had like were treating the were treating the cast like it was therapy. They're going to pushing all their anger issues on the each one of oh, the yeah. members. Did you, I mean, you saw each one of them like, no, I I saw more than you saw. No, I saw more than you saw. No, I saw. But it was a continuous. They replayed it over and over and over. You talk about well, I think Michael Echo letting the hatred bleed into a script. That's got to be She Hulk, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but just before we move on to that, like Echo made a really good point in one of his videos where he talked about um, how, you know, all the characters in Rings of Power talk in these like tortured metaphors that are like really clunky and just like, you know, like pseudo philosophical, like trying to be intelligent. And just it, just comes it was like a fortune cookie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it like yeah. every character does it, whether they're like a humble fucking like not hobbit or whether they're like a, a queen of Numenor. Uh, or an elf that's been around for thousands of years they all fucking do it and so there's no uniqueness to any of the characters because they're all trying to do this same bullshit pseudo intellectual babble and it's just because the writers don't have any skill it's like it's just them projecting their idea of like intelligent dialogue onto every single character and there's no there's no differentiation there's no nuance between them right that's the difference between something like that and something like uh, House of the Dragon, where there, there's distinct speech patterns between characters, they actually like feel like, feel like unique, unique human, human beings. beings. 
I mean, I can remember scenes from House of the Dragon. I don't want to remember scenes from Rings of Power, but even Patty Constantine. I mean, that simple, powerful scene of him walking. Mm. I mean, come on. How did that? And I give you chills when he walks down. Yeah, everyone, everyone talks throne. about it. It's a bad but it is. But can you name it's anything insane. like that? In Rings of Power, even a second. No, I think maybe Dude, the tree. Uh, when, looking at the two trees, maybe for a moment. Well, there's, that, there's that, great scenes close. like like there's it scenes with him earlier on where he's not as crippled as that, but he's like uh, he's lying like in a bathtub, basically like exhausted. He's he's got right. like fucked up arm and stuff, and he's like oh, talking about his his legacy and like how he's going to be remembered like through history. You know, because I've I've not had any great victories, but I've not suffered any great defeats. Is that better, on, dude? Like, right. that, that's such that an interesting sh- insight into his personality. It changed it's weird that my a show idea can have it be the, the 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 auto announcing him and his death as like the series the peaceful gave me some level of closure. I was like, I'm glad that's how he'll be remembered. That's what he'll be written down in his history books. Yeah. The series, the and an incredibly incredibly difficult thing to do because the most exciting characters are the disruptors. The ones who change yeah. the norm, but this the the tension. This was so interesting because he's an institutionalist, and the scriptwriters yep. would yep. never quite have him settled where things are just institutionally mm. settled as he would like them. They'd never quite give you that, and that was such an interesting tension. Well, mm-hmm. first of all, with the idea that there's something noble about sometimes trying to maintain the status quo, like as flawed as it might be, like maybe th- this guy recognizes it's not my place to try and upset everything and like reshape the world in my image. Maybe it's like I should be humbler than that and just well, try and when, maintain things as they are. It's, 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 when it's, considering it's, his children, like it didn't matter what the truth was, it mattered what would lead to the least amount of death. Like, yeah, just to... it's also recognizing the time, right? Sometimes there is a time for disruption disruption mm-hmm. right and sometimes there isn't i think he was like i'm just trying to carry on jahari's uh yeah. the conciliator's legacy which a lot of it was bullshit but like he he was it was peaceful for 54 years i don't want to be the guy that messes it up over some stupid step stones or you know like mm-hmm. uh, you know he it, it was it's much harder and he, he even says this in the show like restraint is the hardest thing that's the hardest thing about being an adult uh that's what makes you an adult is restraint not acting on all your actions uh, but, you know, sometimes he didn't act enough and he can be judged, but that's any leader. And what they did, even George says, like, Patty in, uh, uh, put in a lot of the ideas for this character, by the way. Oh. And George said it's better. Like, he straight up said it's better wow. than in the book. So uh, props to Patty Constantine. He and Matt Smith. Matt Smith put in a lot of ideas for his character, too, that are pretty much in line with Damon. But uh, both... Both of them carried it, but yeah, I, I didn't think this at the beginning of the series, but by the end, Patty was the MVP for sure, by a long shot. By a I'm long happy, shot. happy to be wrong on that one. I, I agree. I said it was a bad I, cast. I'm pretty sure I said it was a bad cast. I was absolutely wrong. You know, I went back after that scene. After that scene, it changed my complete idea about him. I had to go back to the beginning and rewatch because I couldn't stand his character. I'm like, how weak? What is he doing? And then once he showed the strength, when they when he had that, when he embodied the character, and was like, because uh, you look at him like the man feels like he's burning on fire, like he's alive, but he's constant. So he's walking down there for his daughter. I'm like, okay, now I got to go back to episode one. Gave me a whole new perspective. On I think, it. I think, yeah, like I think the, the the I guess the arc for him is like as his, as he becomes physically weaker and more frail, he becomes mentally stronger and you know more resilient. He has to be determined. there for his kids. He's, he's desperate to make sure. That's a unique form of strength they presented in that show, and it was wonderful because he won me over in episode three. It was the speech he gave when he was like he was absolutely falling apart with his wife at the time, Allison, because he thought he would never have a loving wife and children ever again and that he'd failed his like one and only purpose to save the realm by having a a true born son to sit the throne and rescue it from the coming darkness and he's like he's like crying over the fact that he he actually got it like he, he actually managed to reach that level and uh you know now it's just the complications At what of the cost? Profession. Exactly. At what like, cost? exactly yeah no and another thing like that, that i don't want to get too far in the weeds but knowing how it is <laughs> which i'm not going to spoil like there's things they're going to have to change or they're going to have to change the perspective of the maesters who wrote the book on uh Renner. Like like because it it's that's going to be their the the writer's most difficult challenge in the future is Renera's character arc. Which I oh. think they could do. I mean they 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 proved me wrong on this first season. What so. do you find difficult? I haven't read Fire and Blood. I, I can't like I would spoil the shit out oh. of it. I'll just say that um uh 
thing I said publicly, just keeping it super general, is it ends like a Game of Thrones book. It ends not, okay. so, good, not so clean. <laughs> not so clean. We'll just say that. Gotcha. But they could they could fix that because uh, I think they have fixed the book. I, I think it's better than the book. I don't like fake histories that much unless they're written by Tolkien. I, I'm not a big fan of them. So, uh, like, it's a good story, uh, and I like it much more fleshed out where we can actually see characters to root for and not to root for. Like, I totally look at Kristen Cole, like, completely different than I did when I read the book, uh, and Allison. So, uh, yeah, I thought they did a good job improving on uh, the very sparse material from the book. Well, on a side note, do you think George is going to finish finish the book? Uh, he might finish Wins a Winner. I, I, I'm coming around on that a little bit. He might, but he will never finish A Song of Ice and Fire. That is gone. That's never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, gonna he's, happen. The most recent update, it was like three quarters of the way through Winds of Winter, he claims. But then that's like first writing. Then he's going to have to do another like editorial pass. Then it's going to have to go to his publisher. Yeah, it's going to be years. Oh, three quarters. Eleven years, three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five more years for wins. Wins a winner, and he's seventy-two. Not in the best shape in the world, you know. I was twelve <laughs> years old when he started <laughs> writing this book. <laughs> yeah, when he started. Oh God, I was twenty-one when he when he te- he started writing in in ninety-one. Yeah. Uh, so I was. I, I was. I, I imagine him taking the manuscript to the publisher and like walking like Patty Constantine, like with a face half rotted off and just. <laughs> yeah, he's face. like he's like yeah. bent over double, like just trying yeah, to walk yeah. down yeah. The, the hallway with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, wanted, I, I know they they they'll probably want to release it as two books as well because it's going to be so. Oh, he's already good. hinted that. So the fact that he 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 said no 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 forever, and then in a recent interview. Within a month, he said they're probably good. He's like, uh, looks like they're going to want to split it in the two. So it's like, ah, oh. yeah, because they basically said to him, it's double the money, George. It's double it's the like, money. OK, it, it, it is big. This is going to be his longest book. So it's yeah. it's pretty, pretty big. Uh, I don't you know if we, if we get him like six months apart or something like that, that'd be fine. But the last time he split a book into two, it was five years apart. Do you think it's um apart. I don't mean to, it's, it's kind of a tangent, but do you think they're going to put things in place to prevent House of the Dragon from ending as poorly as Game of Thrones now? Like, they'll have a fear of recreating that again, so they need to do something. Are they got to do a new strategy sort of thing. Because I want, this must weigh on them, even down to the investor's position. Like, I could see an investor being like, whatever the hell that was, <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> We're like, oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I it's know. good because, like, a. My initial impulse when you said that is that we can trust them because they've shown the good storytelling. But then there was that hideous episode that ended with the, that gigantic uh, meeting hall yeah. with the dragon yeah. erupting. Yeah. And, and so, I, I hate to know. say it. I hate to say it. But remember, Game of Thrones started up real good. Yeah, I don't trust them yet. I, I don't think I'm at the point of trusting them. I'll watch season two, but uh, I don't trust them. I wouldn't be surprised at all if season two like just was shit. So uh, hopefully it's not. There's completely different people involved, and so far so good. And I would have loved to have seen a Conan series from Ryan Kendall, which we almost had, but Jennifer Sulky, who gave us uh, Rings of Power, decided to shit can that because it was too masculine. So uh, instead, we got House of the Dragon. As uh, this guy says here, always bet on stupid. Always (laughs) bet on stupid when it comes to Hollywood. (laughs) Yes, yes. Um. Yeah, there, there was, uh, I guess there's something we touched upon earlier uh, with G4 TV, where we talked about their hiring practices. So, yeah, for people who are not in the know, um, there was uh, a girl who'd uh, been offered a basically a presentation job on G4 TV. Uh, it was first referenced on the RG8, RGT85 Spawncast, which is like their live stream. Uh, and it was Miss Click who spoke about this. Uh, she said, uh, like, when she was going in for her interview with G4, uh, one of the first questions they asked her was, so why should we cancel Batman? Um, and her reaction was, like, I, I don't know, why why are we canceling Batman? And uh, the the interviewer said to her, well, because he's he's rich and he's white and he's a cisgendered male. Uh, and so... Are they cancelling white people at birth now? <laughs> Is that I think that's 
pretty much the mentality, but it's a really interesting revelation, I guess, about G4 TV, where... Because it's, it's very easy for us to say, like, well, Frost with her, like, ridiculous rant about sexism in gaming, that was what sunk the network. But it kind of seems like, well, Frost was just really a symptom, and the real disease was just, like, right at the core of this network. If this is what you expect from your employees when you hire them, what do you expect to get apart from Frost? And people like her um and yeah like i i don't feel in the least bit bad that the, the entire network failed and went under because you get what you fucking deserve <laughs> and if you if this is what you're this is what you're aiming for well that's what you that's what you like, deserve can i just say what a fun legacy joker as a movie had not only does everyone still think it's really good but everyone yeah. uses that line because that line is yeah. glorious you get what you fucking deserve. It's so true, though. It's so true. And it's so applicable in this case, particularly, because, well, if that's what you're courting in terms of your employees, what do you expect to happen? Why should we cancel Batman? Like, because he, he has the crime, he commits the crime of being white and male and rich. So sorry. Like, what do you want? What would make you happy? I and and the one guy out there that you still see uh, daily who's still working it. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I could have asked him. I don't know if they asked Chris to come back or not. Chris Gore uh, is a huge Batman fan, by the way, massive oh, yeah. Batman fan. So that's the first thing I thought of was like, oh my god, uh, that is the worst question you could possibly ask. But you're right. That that sums it up. This thing was D O A from the very beginning. It was just a bad investment, and it should shed light on ev like. This could be a microcosm of the rest of Hollywood. Like, absolutely. These are the well, more how, many, how many times? How many times have you had people message you or email you and say, like, look, I'm an actor in Hollywood. I agree with you 100%, but I can't say it publicly because I'll, I'll lose any chance of getting roles. That's what everyone's in. But it's like a conspiracy of fucking stupidity. Because it's like everyone's silent, but everyone feels like this is bullshit, but they all go along with it because they don't want to risk speaking up uh, and losing their opportunities and losing their jobs. But it's like if everyone did, then you wouldn't be in this position in the first right. place. If they all spoke up. Yeah, if they all stood That's up, they good. wouldn't be there. It's a big psychological thing, right? I'm assuming you guys have seen different tests on it, but where they'll have one person who's joining some kind of meeting or whatever, they think it's all legit, but everyone is an actor, and they'll all be like in an elevator or in a room and... I've seen one. I think it was um, the Vsauce stuff, but smoke just starts billowing into the room from underneath a door, and everyone is told to just stay still, just to see what that one other person will do. And they see the smoke, and they look around, and they're like, oh, "No one's, no one's moving." Okay, I'll, I'll just stay here. The smoke's like filling the room, and they're like, "Guys, are we, <laughs> are we worried about that?" People are sheep. <laughs> yeah, sheep. It's Humans are herd animals, ultimately. Yeah, I, I don't want to shit on humans too hard, but like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it could be awkward. Yeah, you need sometimes you need that voice to to lead. I mean, that's the thing. Not everyone's a leader. No, no, they're not. I suppose yeah, some are Indians, most are Indians, and the others are chiefs. A conspiracy of dunces. That's what the uh, that's what Dane seventeen ninety two says. That's exactly what it is. What it's a constant fight between um uh, creative highly creative artists and a bunch of people who just look at 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 what hollywood produces as widgets as product um and now that it's super corporate and i mean super corporate it's it's impossible it, it was hard enough to get a good movie when you were spending somebody else's money and one of the producers was hooked on a mountain of cocaine but, I mean, <laughs> But like you, you had a chance because the the coked out guy was like, "This is just crazy enough to work." And we have to say yes, let's go. Uh, but now it's like fights <laughs> are graphs, and and now it's just it's a producer's it's a producer's Hollywood now, and, and not a director's and artist's Hollywood, and that's been happening for a long time. Uh, but still, you know, the true artists like Quentin Tarantino used to have some juice in Hollywood. Still has some, but not as much as he had before. You know, and he should like Martin Scorsese should have all the juice that he needs in Hollywood, but he doesn't anymore because uh, it's not a creative driven market anymore. Uh, so, we, and, <laughs> so we need to go back to the cocaine filled days. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah, man, there you go. Do. We'll, we'll, we'll be artistic. Coke over woke. <laughs> over woke. And there's I, your there's your slogan guy. right there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the that's the problem, though. It's just. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's ultimately it's pandering to an audience which doesn't exist and never has existed. Um, there was the illusion of that while you know Twitter was was run by whoever it was run by, um, Jack and, Dorsey. Yeah, uh, and then when he left, it was just like a, a conglomerate of of assholes. Yeah. Obviously, like we've got a new asshole who's bought the company over, who's um, less concerned with that kind of thing. Um, and it's it's kind of resulting in a purge of of that environment. And um, I don't know, is that gonna is that gonna result in Hollywood's reassessing their their view of the world? Because like Twitter seems to be their tiny little window into the world, and it was a a fucked up, distorted window before. Maybe it's slightly less fucked up and distorted now. Will it but help? wasn't but wasn't that the problem though? Is that Hollywood was creating films. For that five percent on Twitter, I mean the yes. hashtag, the hashtag heroes who were like learning writing skills from like TikTokers with Tourette's. I mean these were the same people who they thought would spend money on merchandise, collectibles, rewatching it, Blu-rays, 4K, you know, but they didn't. They were just virtue signalers. Do you think Black Panther would have gotten a Best Picture nomination if it wasn't <laughs> hashtag Oscar so white? No, 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 yeah. of course not. Of course it does. If Ryan Gosling was Black Panther, they wouldn't have given the Oscar nomination. <laughs> right. <laughs> Zach Panther. I mean, y- y'all, did y'all read John Leguizamo, what was it, two weeks ago? Where he's like, do you see there's no Latino representation? I'm like, did you just watch Black Panther's trailer, which is coming out in two weeks, that they changed, like, the Atlantean mythological superhero for a, a Mayan? And he's like, Hey, I mean, hey, the one thing I'll give Wakanda forever, it's more diverse than Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is true, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah we've gone from like 90, 97% black down to about 80 probably. So. Yeah. 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 But I did get a weird feeling at the end. Did y'all get that feeling at the end where is like, is Hollywood not only attacking kind of like the middle America style culture around the world, a traditional culture, but they wanted a race war. I, I don't know. It was just odd. Yeah, that was, they, they, that. they painted themselves into a woke corner on that one. They okay. Said, so it wasn't just me. Okay. No, no. Okay. They're, they're fighting to keep stuff away from the white folk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. It's funny when like all these conflicting ideologies just like ultimately come head first into each other. You know, and that the, these people are desperately trying to like keep it all rationalized in their heads. It's like I can't do it anymore. Everything doesn't <laughs> make sense. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's just it's fun watching them melt down, like when their ridiculous worldview just fucks itself over. It's like, yeah, that fine. Is- You've made a rod for your own backs. Now fucking whip yourself with it, you dicks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of Disney, they- I had this uh, this this notion that. Um, the strange kind of thing of of the illusion of variety now that Disney owns all of Star Wars, so Star Wars is now a kind of Star Wars a la carte. So mm. if you like dark and gritty Star Wars, you can have the Disney and or. If you like it a bit more fluffier and a bit more likable with the the toy puppet Yoda or whatever, then you've got that one. And it's kind of this illusion because it's all under the the Disney banner. It's all the same thing. It reminds me of this episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes to the Duff Brewery. There's one of like stuff like like, stuff normal and stuff special. There's just one pipe going into all of them. You want want batshit nonsense? You got Kenobi, Boba Fett. Like, oh, he's bold the choice at that point. Jesus, Boba. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, (laughs) it's all made in the same fucking factory. Um, Yeah, yeah, cookie cutter. Yeah, cookie cutter. So that's yeah, why, I, you know, now that we have access to it, more people are checking out, you know, South Korean stuff and yeah. uh, Indian, you know, uh, European, uh, Indian. Yeah. RRR got Chris yeah, Gore. Not stop talking about it. And that's fine. I'll eventually see it. Uh, gotta, I honestly, great. I can recommend it. It's genuinely good fun. You will have I a love dude, it. I'm looking forward to Troll. It's probably going to be dumb, but it looks fun. Uh, I don't care. Uh, and it's a foreign language film. And I'm watching more of those now. I watched them before. In the '90s, I watched a ton of them. You know, well, when I, I mean, the- I just I got done watching All Quiet on the Western Front. It was like a German production, fantastic. Yeah, um, that's cool. watching I mean, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, it's really good as well. Like, it's yeah, it's funny because uh, Disney's intention is clearly to generate a series, like a huge audience of people that just go nom nom nom, not thinking about <laughs> anything. But the thing is, like, I probably would have told them, guys, the the key, the trick to that is actually making good shit. You'll yeah. get them. You'll get them just waiting for the next thing. They'll be all ready and they'll be hyped. Like it's not to release whatever the hell this was. Whoever originally pitched the idea to them for this formula, if it was Kevin Feige, whoever, it's like 
God, the damage they've done is absolutely huh. nuts yeah. to this industry. But they want anesthetized consumers, you know, they want them in a coma. They just want, yeah. we want to legally rob you of your money. Go away. You know, just give us That's your money. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, there, there was a time, like, when the Disney brand was actually worth something. Like, if you yeah. go back to the, the 90s when we were kids, yeah, like, yeah. a Disney movie was generally fucking Golden. great. Like if you got I mean, Disney yeah, animated a movie, it was gonna be it was gonna be pretty fucking good. Like yeah, there was the occasional dot, but like generally, they they were pretty well written. They were like the animation was beautiful. It was a sign of quality. Like they were the people to go to for like they animated had, kids films. Yeah, there was a positive reputation once, and it's hard. They to had that reputation. Point. I'll give you that. They did. I mean, with uh, with well, yeah, whether or not even Latter whether or not like even owned. Life, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, that shield is gone. It was gone a couple, like, even a decade ago at this point. Decade people were very ago. soured on Disney. Yeah. The thing is, even, even the people it... like this stuff are like, Disney's like a Lovecraftian monster. <laughs> it's this creepy creature that's ruining everything. Yeah. Pixar, Not affiliated with me, by the way. Pixar had this spotless reputation. They're bringing it up in chat. Pixar was just uh, gold standard for, uh, mm -hmm. for a long time. Not anymore. Now they're just another Disney thing. Right. Well, I think like Lightyear absolutely destroyed their reputation, hasn't it? Yeah, but see, that's exactly what happens. It, whether it's a corporation or it's the ideology or the combination of both, radicalization in anything homogenizes whatever you create because it strips it of everything unique and genuine. I mean, do, don't you think that that it strips it of everything that? Like you had Toy Story, Toy Story, and then all of a sudden you have Lightyear. Well, everything becomes more like Lightyear instead of original like Toy Story. See what I'm well, saying? I, I think I, I hated, um, well, from a purely aesthetic point of view, I hated this um, swing towards computer animation in, yeah. in kids' movies. Yep. Because like everything just looks exactly the fucking same. Yeah. You know, it, it, and it's, oh, you know, technically it's impressive. On the one hand but on the other hand it's just it's so boring and homogenized like it used to be you know the animation styles would vary between films so like the lion king looked radically different from something like hercules because like different animators the style was different the art style was different um and you could differentiate all those films from each other now they all just look identical it's like they just rolled off the same assembly line from the same factory uh, it looks they sterile. just feed a different script into the algorithm to give you that end result. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So they have yeah, a choice get... now to accept that the society that society has turned their back on this material and start retooling before they continually lose more money. I mean, Disney stock crashed to the lowest point in 21 years this last week. Good. Mm. Yeah, they deserve it. Like yeah, we said absolutely. before, you get what you yeah, fucking deserve. That. They absolutely. have absolutely earned it. They have worked very hard to get that low. Uh, and I'm not even sure they're at their lowest point. Not even near it. <laughs> well, that, like we're, we're watching them dig this huge grave. They're putting absolute and crazy effort in. Industrially sized, like, diggers. With this, we're just right? like, oh, wow, look at you go. Like, the, no, sure. we're, we're at the stage of uh, good, good times have made weak men. And now yes. weak men are making hard times. Yep. And so... Yep. Here we are. We're pretty much there now. The hard times are about to make strong men that will produce good stuff again. But well, Chapek said so well. that uh, streaming won't become profitable but until the end of 2024 with Disney. So two years until they assume the, the streaming will become profitable for them. And that's they after just, they just lost a billion. That's after they in introduce ads. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, right. Right. Remember, they want to have 200, uh, over 200 million million subscribers yeah. and they're not even halfway there yet and that, uh, and so, some of those numbers are from india where they're charging a tenth of the price which yes losing money on or verizon where they're not charging anybody they're just counting i think i think honestly like as a culture i think people are getting oversaturated now with all of this stuff and i think they're getting turned off it there, there's a I, I feel like there's just this growing i don't know shift where people are just done with all of these streaming services. They don't care anymore. It's just so much garbage getting subbed down their show. Yeah, it's, it's too many. It's too much. Too much stuff. Too much content. And they're just getting overwhelmed to the Dude. point where they just say, I'm fucking done. I'm, I'm out. I had enough time to like enjoy a show, a, a movie last night in my little home theater, which is rare. And I and I hit my little Roku apps. And, and like I scrolled for like 20 seconds. I'm like, holy shit. 
shit, how many channels do I have on this thing? Yeah. You know, I didn't program it. I guess the guy who set it up program. I'm like, good God. And and I remember when uh, Red Letter Media, this was a couple of years ago when they did that, when they just the joke, rattled yeah. off all the streaming services. Well, dude, <laughs> what was so great about that is they threw fake ones in every once in a while. <laughs> I, couldn't <laughs> I, couldn't like, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. You just put a plus on something. You convinced me. Okay. So uh, I don't know. But like, I wonder how many we have now. I wonder what the count is. Now Now I'm going to look it up after this. I'm going to actually give it. What, what, what we're in right now is like the early 2000s of internet search engines. You know, when like everyone was having a go at it. and Everyone wanted to be like an, a search engine and everyone was vying for dominance. And like now we just have Google basically. And that's all. <laughs> like give it a few years and that's what we'll end up with it'll just be like amazon will just be the dominant fucking streamer or, or... Well, hopefully not <laughs> amazon. I, I, i'm not sure well if rings of power keeps going the way <laughs> it is i don't know about that because um uh, maybe i'll get a number i don't know but uh they've never given us a number of how many people actually actively watch prime video we we know how many prime subscribers there are i'm, right. I'm one because of the shipping and all that but uh how many prime how many active prime video where they're watching something once a week even and how uh, many they, did they lose remember. and how many did they lose yeah i think they lost i think it was a net loss from rings of power i think eventually when it plays out it'll be a net loss i agree uh-huh I we're agree at a time in society where metrics have just imploded like yes. if Taylor Swift has the top 10 places on the charts, what does that mean in terms of streaming? What does a Grammy mean? What does Nothing streaming means anything and numbers like, none mean? None of these awards mean anything. Like Was if someone gets a, a fucking like BAFTA or something, like for what? Like who cares? Yeah. Like nobody, yeah, nobody way, pays attention. Yeah, got to give you props. The BAFTA awards look way better than the Oscars, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah chucking some Stephen Fry, it looks kind of okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, was that true, Echo? Did, did she really own the top 10 spots? I saw yeah, that I in, the, in the streaming things. Yeah, um, no, I don't know. Sure. Really? Um, do you think we're because we have a point of comparison with shows? And what I worry about is that there's a generation coming up now where it's actually been about ten years since The Wire, The Sopranos, oh. Old Walk Empire, Dead all those way. shows. Um, and there's a generation now that doesn't have That's that point five. of comparison because they haven't seen those, and so maybe they're just used to shit. I yeah, I, 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 yes. I because I think you're right. Bet. Ten years ago, we had a renaissance like that uh, that I thought was just going to keep. I'm like, wow, this is god, oh, man, it's just going to be so good. And then yeah, it's it like TVs or TV shows are just movies now. It's fantastic. This yeah, will never uh, change. Deadwood, Deadwood, one Deadwood. of the greatest shows ever made. Oh, such a good show. Uh, we had like yeah, it was, yeah. Now HBO, HBO started that. HBO like. Yeah, but- event they, they, shows and they, they were trying to turn the rings of power into an event show and it didn't happen like you know, rome hbo did rome another yeah, fabulous yeah, carnival it's annoying carnival. too because they probably could have if it was well written it probably would have been a big deal yeah to power well you know the so. russo brothers Mahler were first in contention but supposedly it was supposedly it was simon that heard the pitch from jd Payne and patrick mccain and said oh that's exactly what i want I don't well, know if uh, variety said. Okay, so the Russo brothers were in play in the beginning, yeah. uh, and they had a horrible pitch. They don't, oh, uh, really? I, I was going to say, I don't know if it's controversial, but I don't know that the Russo brothers' rings of power would have been any good either. No. Really? <laughs> it would have been the wrong I don't time. know, man. Like, I think they I would have know. studied the material at least. I mean, because these guys look like they just read a pop-up book. Yeah, the, the Russo um, brothers would have been too kinetic, you know. It would have been not the right. Good time. point. Good point. It was, it was about what what got JD Payne and Patrick McKay the show was their pitch. Uh, it was quick. It was concise, uh, and that's what sold what sold Simon. But there was another pitch from somebody else who might have written Dune, uh, the film <laughs> uh, that was a little too long because the guy had just this encyclopedic knowledge of Tolkien. Right. So he knew it. Right, what are you right. saying is he knew it, Gary? He was bad at the pitch. Oh. And, uh, I was going to say, encyclopedic knowledge of Tolkien. Wow, they must have hated him. They, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if he, if he fucked off to write Dune or was already going to co-write Dune, but he went off and wrote something that, uh, quite frankly, was thousand times better so uh and i'm not even the biggest fan of that movie i think it's okay but i it's a thousand times better than the rings of power for sure uh, oh, by the way gary i got that name for you it's the king of diamonds that's simon tolkien's book that's supposed to be that amazon's supposed to make have you tried to read it no <laughs> I, I looked at it it was just 
Well, because it's just weird. He basically takes court cases that he had presided over and he's trying to write them up, which is nothing oh. wrong with that. He's just not a writer like his grandfather was. No, he know. wasn't. No. no, not at all. But here's a question. It, it looks to me, because you're you're the master in all the area of the, but all of y'all, when especially what Marvel did, how come Marvel is repeating their mistake with IE Disney that they made when they were just a comic book company? Like you're going to have New World Order with Hydra. With Captain Marvel, but it failed rich. before. It failed before. It if did. It didn't it fail did. before, I, then I'd say, okay, they're trying something they haven't tried. I suspect that it's uh, it's hubris and intellectual property issues. Um, oh. We're gonna we're gonna adapt stuff from the Disney era. Not everything is, but a lot of this is from the Disney era, post two thousand nine when they bought. Because remember, they bought it before they bought Star Wars. And let's not forget the reason they bought Marvel. And Star Wars. Does anybody remember? Anybody remember why Disney bought Marvel and Star Wars? To get more boys, to get more boys interested in their girl product. Wow. Straight up. <laughs> Disney was Disney princesses. It was a girl brand. It was a girl brand. Then we need some more dudes in here. What do they immediately do? Turn their boy brand into a Disney princess brand. <laughs> 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 oh, That's what they've done. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. But then they're wondering where the boys are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they. they I just. I, I feel so. Yeah, I feel so bad. But like, imagine being like a, a a young boy growing up now, and this is the kind of shit that you have to watch. Because like a lot of them, like they're probably, <laughs> they won't have dads. Like they'll have a single mom or whatever that's raising them, and so she won't be able to like show them like the the awesome movies that we got as kids. And like, what are they gonna grow up with? Fucking She Hulk. Oh, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> that's your classic. Where's the yeah. Time Bandits? They don't get Time Bandits or Goonies or Star Wars. They they're not gonna get Back to the Future. Yeah, they're not gonna get the the you know the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the original one. Like, yeah, they're just not gonna get it, man. They'll get Daniel I'm Craig in the last Bond, and it'll be like, that's your Bond. Well, which one? The black lady or the dude? Yeah. Yep. Han Solo in Star Wars was virile. Has there been any other leading man in Star Wars since? Maybe Hayden Christensen, even though he's kind of whiny space brat. But since 1977, has there been another virile male character in the Star Wars universe? Uh, clearly Boba needs- Fett when riding his Bantha. Echo, you're a thousand percent right. But Lando was part of that. Like, he was okay. part of it. He was yeah, part has of it. Been- has there has- been a yeah, like- that scene with Greedo in the in the tavern, it's got such an energy and tension to it because this yeah. is a, a man who's, you know, who can kill and he's got the smooth debonair quality to him and, you know, it's magnetic and it's just been nothing like it since because that idea of virility is somehow conflated with being aggressive in some way. I don't quite know what it is. Well, it has is there been an actual masculine man in any Disney movie ever in the past, like, 10 years? I'll wait. Um, Outside of uh, I'm struggling uh, here. Outside Star of Wars. Captain Jack, Star That's Wars ten, didn't work ten Star years Wars. ago though, you know. Yeah, yeah Star Wars yeah. doesn't work without Han Solo. No. It just doesn't. It, it yeah. like it, he is the the rogue element. That's that he became uh, as popular, if not more popular, than Luke when we were kids. Uh, we still love Luke, but Han was the fucking man. Han, yeah. Spike, and Damon Targaryen, the same character. They're the same character. The the rogue chaos in them. Chaos. Yeah. You throw yeah. a little bit of chaos in there. Yep, and uh, that's that's uh, that was that's what makes a good story. You know, you need that. You need that character. And you know, sometimes girls can play the character when Kara Thrace in uh, in Battlestar Galactica, which I was, oh, yeah. I was with everybody else. I'm like, what the fuck? You turn this Starbuck into a girl? But they did it good. <laughs> they cast it right, uh, and they played it right. She still was a woman, by the way, in that. But it, it worked, too. and it worked. Uh, and they also made it like, you know, they, they also weren't trying to remake the original Battlestar. They were making their own like alternate universe Battlestar, which worked. Uh, didn't mm-hmm. work with Star Trek when Jar Jar did it. Worked with uh, Rommel Moore because he's yeah. he's talented and Jar Jar isn't. See, that's I, the- I, would, I would argue that they turned Apollo into a bit of a pussy. But yeah, generally speaking, yeah, Battlestar Galactica the remake. The conscientious they- objector. Uh, yeah. But Adama was a fucking stud. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Edward James almost was fantastic in that. It was great. Yeah. By the way, he's got a face as pitted as the surface of Mars, man. That guy. He does. 
Did you see RRR <laughs> Greenlit the sequel? Oh yes. R R R R R R R. No, but Raja Mooley is is going forward with the sequel because he says he has two more films to do before he does his life's long uh, dream, which is the Mahabharata, which is five films to complete the whole. I, I love. I, I I genuinely loved um, RRR. Me too. You know the the sheer over the top bravado of the whole thing. It was melodramatic. It was unapologetically over the top and awesome. Um, and I just thought it was so it super fun. It put yeah. me down this rabbit hole though. I watched his Bahubali. It had a lot of Lord of the Rings elements. Did you see that, Drinker? I haven't seen that. No. Oh, you got to check it out. Bahubali one and two, the the beginning and the conclusion. And I just saw Kantara, which is by this Canada film. I didn't realize how many film industries there were in India. Like Bollywood is now one of the is becoming one of the smallest ones. You have Tollywood, you have Sandalwood, and you have Kannada films. And uh, there's two others. I tell you, man, it makes sense that they've got like such a massive film industry, and it should only get bigger because they have the world's largest population now. Yeah. The, the largest concentration of anyone like in the world is in India. Did it beat China? Yep. Oh, I think they just know there are now more Indians than than people in China. Yep. And and they've and they've been stealing Hollywood stuff because <laughs> Hollywood, Hollywood was outsourcing a bunch of stuff. To, I was working with them, and uh, yeah, they've they, they've gotten a lot of a lot of stuff from Hollywood from ten years ago, a lot of technology that they can now re uh, repurpose into their own. That's great. But you got to think. You got to think about it. The director of Cantata, Cantata is right now almost about to catch RRR in its box office. It's only been out a month. And the director's name is Rishab Shetty. And he basically said his vision is that I find that something can have more universal appeal the more it focuses on local regional flavor to give something to the world they've never seen before. Cause it goes, everybody can do action films. Everybody can do this. But he goes, if you show someone a piece of a world they've never seen before, it'll take off. The critical dot. Yeah. He's back there. He got up for a minute and then he sat down yeah. again. <laughs> there's two, yeah. there's two of them lurking around oh, there here. There. Somewhere. Okay. Eventually one of them will move. Yeah. What are they doing there? What are you doing over there? Sleeping. I've had a rough day sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough business. Yeah, one of them's taking the other one's bed, so like he's oh. pissed off and he doesn't have a place to sleep. So yeah. Oh well, what can you do? They're Just weird up in the garden that. like I do. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that a couple times. I've yeah. got a question I've been wanting to ask all of y'all. Why do you think you have a show like Yellowstone, which is number one, but which is nowhere discussed on YouTube or on online? I would, I would happily discuss it because I've been blasting through it recently and yeah, I've been well, fucking loving it. Okay, because I couldn't find anyone. I was like, I, I love the show. But I was looking for reviews, looking for people talking about it. It's like nothing. I just wondered if there's a completely different audience. It's, for it's it. a normie show. Okay. Normie show, yeah. I mean, it's uh, good. A lot of people like it. I, it's just not my thing. Gotcha. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I've liked it. Like, Is there like, any drug deals taste... going bad in it? I might watch it if there's drugs. Is there drugs <laughs> going? Yeah, because... <laughs> Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's mostly killing and torturing people, you know. So stuff like that. Oh, maybe like that. Okay. Well, oh maybe, yeah. Maybe I think I'll... it's helped by like a good a good cast of actors, um, and pretty good writing. Like the dialogue, I think, is pretty solid. Um, and yeah, like they they've got a, they've got like a strong female character in it that's actually really fucking well written, and oh, like yeah. you like her. Like Villains. damn, she gets put through the ringer, but she just keeps uh, keeps on kicking. She's awesome. Um, and now they have two prequels. They had seven, what, 1883 and now 1923 with Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren coming out. No shit. Yeah, it's coming out in December. No Basically Harrison. how the whole Yellowstone branch. Yeah, yeah. Daytime gun. yeah. I couldn't believe it. Ford is doing it with Mirren. Uh, it's so odd for me to look at these movie stars that were movie stars and now they're on television. I, I always do a double it's, take. It's, well, well, Stallone's that's... doing a, a TV show now, isn't he? It's like the, yeah, 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 Tulsa. Same Tulsa, people who yeah. made Yellowstone and Sopranos. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that, I, I, and we'll see how good it is. I'm, that I'm watching for sure. Uh, I'm down with some good crime stuff. I, I Breaking Bad was awesome. Better Call Saul was awesome. Oh, so yeah. Tulsa King. It's called Cult. Thank you, Faye. It was called. It's called Tulsa King. Yeah. 
Ford will yeah. take anything. Yeah, Ford is uh like yeah, he's taking any role now. So he's gonna he's gonna be General Ross. Do y'all uh, find it odd when you get these movie stars who are now on television? It's the destination now. I mean, like the, the kid, they can't go, get work in film anymore. But There's it didn't strike you out a little bit. Like that's the guy. I remember Stallone would say, I'm never doing television. And now I'm like he's on Tulsa King. Yeah, yeah. It is it is odd, but that's that's the changing world we live in now. The the movie star is done and they're gonna have to take some sort of to, to stay relevant, you know, you got well, Kevin Costner is in Yellowstone. I mean yeah. that was an A-list actor for a long time. I mean, I can understand Costner because like really his career kind of self-destructed in the nineties. Yeah, whereas you know, Stallone's been kind of riding high, so it seemed like a, an unusual choice for him to move over he had to a rough TV. Patch. He had a rough patch, but he came back. Anyone that see that movie that Stallone was in as a superhero or whatever? Oh, oh yeah, it's Samaritan. Yeah, I didn't see it. I don't know if it's any good. It was decent, it. not great. I heard it's it. Yeah, yeah just, mm -hmm. it's popcorn film for Sunday when, you know, just, when you're bored. I just thought it was is funny because there... it's like Stallone's uh, leading an action movie that's a superhero. It's <laughs> like, is there anyone left at this point who isn't a superhero? <laughs> no. Like, just everyone's done it. It's the thing to do. Well, Kevin Harrison Costner. Ford. I was gonna say Harrison, <laughs> yeah. Harrison Ford. Uh, you late for that? He's in. <laughs> oh, hell is he the next Bruce Willis, Willis now? Is Harrison Ford the next Bruce Willis? Is on that trajectory? Do you think? I think he might be. Uh... Or is it Liam? Oh, he's he's got to be close <laughs> to retirement. <laughs> well, Bruce yeah, well, is a lot younger. Well, he's eighty now, isn't he? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bruce is a lot younger, but he's got uh, that that uh, language. It's not dementia. It's. Uh, it, what? He can't. He, he's having trouble speaking. Oh, aphasia! You're talking about Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah which is a shame to hear. And uh, he's yeah. done what you could consider a smart capitalistic move. He's just sold himself out as maximum so that he can take care of himself, yeah. presumably and his family, and move on. Yeah. Right, but he has made for the last eight years a bunch of just straight yep. the cable duds. That it's yeah. like. You know, wife killed by Thunderbolt. Take vengeance on Sky. I don't know. It's just yeah, yep. everything. Well, I think it, it, his his shtick was like he would show up for like a day of filming, and like mm. they could get whatever they could out of him, and then they would just replace him with body doubles and like shoot oh. him out of focus for the rest of the movie. Oh, it's and... amazing. Some of the stuff because the Red Letter Media video about it all. It's like you start seeing these breakdowns, and it's like look at these scenes. It's like he clearly has no idea, like actually no clue yeah. what's going on. They just told him to like, say this on a green screen or whatever. We'll do the rest with an earpiece. Yeah, so it's yeah. a set. But, it's um, much. it's like the is the gas station equivalent of a movie. Like it's just something you could pick up on the floor. Even you be like, what is it? What even is this? Like an absolute joke of what the industry's become. But yeah, like, you know, you expect that's going to exist. And they're like, holy shit, we can get Bruce Willis. Yes. We're on a budget of like one million. Ninety percent goes to him. <laughs> like that's yeah. like basically it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like yeah, it's like the Steven Seagal effect as well. Like you know, just there's tiny little bit of name recognition associated with him. It's like, fuck it, just get him in as many films as you can while he's still alive. Um, yeah. Well, before he died, Sean Connery retired. Gene Hackman has retired. Um, Jack Nicholson has retired, but I think he's got dementia. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Don't I, know. That's I, cool. I wouldn't be surprised there. Yeah. But yeah, all of these guys are super old. Like, they are, they are done as that generation. I just the generation that's replacing them. I just don't know what we have left. Well, and it sucks growing up with, uh, with all of them being thrown at you because, like, my dad wanted me to see all the best movies of all time, so all of them are like my favorite actors and stuff. And it's like they're all dying or retiring now. Did you, you see? Like, did you see the Deadline article? I can't remember what. It's two studios. Help me, chat. That made a big deal about hiring TikTokers to help them develop Christ. content. <sighs> This is the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think once they visited the White House, that was the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. TikTokers to develop content. I can't wait to see that. I'm I'm sure that'll turn out great. You get like movies that are like 20 seconds long. <laughs> you know? With hundred cuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's such garbage. Did yeah, anybody just... check out the new John Wick trailer? Yeah, I did. I oh yeah, I can't wait for that. Oh, yeah, I'm. I like. I like John Wick movies. I do. I do. I think it reminds us. At least it reminds me of what Hollywood used to do. You know, just entertain you. It's it right. fun. Yeah. With the story, well, the first one's yeah. epic. Like the first one's fucking. Epic. I quite love the first one. Not a fan of yeah. two and three. <laughs> yeah. 
they're fine. They're the, they're the what we used to get in terms of iterative sequels. They yeah. tell the same story, but worse, basically. Yeah. It's like, all right, fine. But you don't um, think the mythology Mahler kind of like adds something a little bit different that each... That's that actually two... precisely why I don't like them. I thought the mythology oh. in the first one was fucking great and that they ruined oh. it in the two and yeah. three. Yeah, Mahler, I could not agree more. Some movies uh, don't need mythology, right? Okay. Because <laughs> well, it's a lame mythology. Don't no, no worry, my... my, my my opinion is very controversial on this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I, 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 I am fine with them existing. I haven't rewatched the sequels as much as I've, I've rewatched the first one oh, yeah. 20 times. Like, I love it. Yeah, I love the first one. Yeah. And then, uh, what was it called? Nobody felt like another form of that, where it's just like, guy gets fucking pissed and starts beating people up. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was all they went for. It was just like a lot of the, the stunt people and the directors and stuff from... from john wick and they were just like fuck it should we just make another movie yeah okay cool i love nobody I nobody feels like it's like recognizing it. that yeah just just be entertained we know what you want we'll find a story that facilitates it. i heard they're doing a sequel though so it could oh, be in nobody? trouble with that with could with Odin Kirk. well That's i mean hopefully yeah well, i know he's like you know he's yeah. had health issues yeah yeah I, wor I worry about him that man works his fucking ass off uh yeah. With John Wick, once you're on horseback on downtown Manhattan, it's probably, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, make it stop. But you got Ian McShane. I love Ian McShane. Ian McShane. Yeah, same. I love him as well. I mean, from yeah, Deadwood when I first him. saw him. He even did this show a long time ago. I think it was on uh, NBC called Kings, where he played like a Solomon type figure. I was like, I don't care how bad the show is. I just want to hear Ian McShane. I, I always appreciate him for Lovejoy back in the Love UK in yes. the 90s. <laughs> Lovejoy was like fucking on TV all the time when I was, he was a kid. One of the good, he was one of the good things with the American Gods the first season. Oh, so. yeah. I, yeah did, he, did he play Odin? I can't remember. Odin. Yes. Yeah. That was cool. Um, yeah. I'd also go as far as saying he was a fucking legendary sort of pop up in Hot Rod. Him being there was hilarious. Oh god, yeah, the dad yeah. <laughs> when he throws a fucking ninja throwing star. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> underestimate you your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see that movie again. It's so funny. Oh god, it's it's when he does the special move on, on at the end to make him shit himself. <laughs> it's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we've got a few super chats here. Do, shall we see if we can do a few? Uh, yeah, do we it. Up? All right, cool. I've got the critical doggo here watching me for some reason. Um, Chuxenhausen, so he's he's done a few of them together. He said, uh, Drinker, you mentioned in your video on modern audiences that you would be next doing a take on the pussification of men in Hollywood. Can't wait. Yeah, I'll be getting to that. Believe me. Uh, I just wanted to add some positives that men can still be men. Case in point, Johnny Lawrence, no nonsense, speaks his mind and beer. Uh, yeah, he does indeed. But the problem with him is like he's kind of treated as a joke at the same time. Um, and part three says, yes, he's flawed too, but he learns and grows from it. Best part, he inspires the boys to be men like him, just like Miguel and the legendary Hawk. That is true. Um, but yeah, I just feel like... <laughs> Cobra Kai is this weird, like, bubble of storytelling that just exists outside of the Hollywood norms. Um, and it's only a matter of time until they, they get their claws into it, you know? Um, yeah, it, it's it's been very lucky so far, but, man, it's it's living on borrowed time before it gets wokeified, I think. Um, Ashernobog says, Moller started EFAP 1, uh, listening while I work. Some of my favorite lines include... Five people on one stream, that would be too many. And I would <laughs> I would like to see a Boba Fett show. Hey, drink Oh, Gary. God. Don't even... <laughs> the, there was a point, I think... Someone showed me this clip. It's so great. It was like after after Endgame, I think someone sends in a message saying like, oh, I think the MCU is going to be destroyed. And I say, along with uh, Rags and Frank, something like they would have to release like a terrible movie for almost each character. And then they would have to like have no like kill off people and ruin ca like it's a pretty difficult thing to destroy the mcu as a whole i just like well <laughs> they did it they did it well uh reaps says perennial petition for uh, pipkin pippa to be provided a provisional position as a guest on the program sometime yes i gave up on the alliteration okay thank you uh rrtnz says Hail Drinker, nice to see you in Dave Cullen's live chat this week. Yes, uh, give me an idea for an epic stream. You moderating a Star Trek discussion or de debate 
sorry, debate between Dave and Rob Burnett. Uh, have a good one on me, mate. Uh, yes, thank you very much, man. Um, be great to get Dave on this stream at some point if I could. Um, he's just a he's a tough man to get in contact with these these days. What can I say? Um, yeah. God bless Robert. Uh, you know, uh, I he knows more about Star Trek than I ever will, that's for sure. But uh, I think maybe he's going a little bit easy on, on Star Trek Picard now. But maybe that's just me. Uh, we'll find out in February when it comes I, out. I think so. Um, Patient Elijah says, Hey, Drinker, I was wondering if you could make your main channel a featured one on CDAH. Continue to next Super Chat. So... Um, this will make it easier to hop from AH to your main channel um, or after hours. If you can't do it right now, could you write down uh, on a piece of paper to do it after your stream ends so you don't forget it? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so basically, yeah, um, they want my main channel featured on Critical Drinker after hours, so they're linked together. Okay, I get you. I will make a point to do that. Um, Stephen Bobo says, Drinker, have you heard about IGN interviewing the creators of Final Fantasy 16 about the lack of diversity in their newest game? Yeah, I have, actually. Plus, do you think Yoshi P, game director, has a good answer? I don't know what he said. I don't know what his response was, but uh, I know, yeah, the, their interview was based on the premise of, like, we, we need to start holding Japanese developers to a higher standard, basically. We need to make them embrace woke ideology from the west because uh, that's worked out so fucking well for our games industry um yeah I, I i can't see the japanese embracing that i can't see them giving a shit what you want them to do like they do their own thing because they've got their own culture uh and it's resulted in them producing some pretty good games so i don't know what his answer was but i hope it was to the effect of fuck off you absolute bell ends i don't care what you think or want from me um so yeah that's what i hope um grimnack 28 says hello gentlemen i hi highly recommend vghs video game high school cheesy but a good watch i don't know if any of you guys have seen it video mm. game high school no no, no. sorry also, who dunks on the orcs and saves the day? Who levels up Gandalf from Gandalf the Grey? Scott Ian Pippin. Those brave <laughs> chat hobbits. Yes, this is an EFAP 93 reference. Love you guys. Cheers on High Rex. It's classic. Uh, Angry Batman says, I definitely have never seen the movie in the thumbnail starring Jesse Jane. Nope, never. Not twice <laughs> or more. My wife must never know. <laughs> You know what? It's like it's nice to see good-looking women on screen, and we don't get that in Hollywood much these days. So you know, you got to take what comes. <laughs> if we have to go via porn, then so be it. God damn it! <laughs> He's like, oh, that's a sacrifice I'll make. I'll watch. Yeah. Porn, I guess. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> You've pushed me to this Hollywood. <laughs> oh, oh. This is your fault. <laughs> Uh, Master A says, Ahoy drinker and crew. Unfortunately, I won't be able to join the stream, but just want to let you guys know that you have given me incentive to create a decent story in the form of a graphic novel. Bottoms up, mates. Cheers. Thank you very much, and I'll wish you the best of luck for your, your graphic novel. Play the high note says, To be fair, you have to be, you have to have a very IQ, sorry, a very high IQ to understand Andor. I, I don't think it has to be that high. You just have to have a quite a high boredom threshold. Yeah. Probably. Maybe some uh, Adderall. No. <laughs> yeah. well, from, from what I hear, it's worth it if you get through the the, the slower stuff, but uh, I still need to check it out. The first three episodes. Gary, I've told people before who are like, I'm, I'm like, you gotta watch Buffy. They're like, I'm through like all of season one. Are you serious? And I'm like, yes, keep going. <laughs> They're like, yeah. I shouldn't have to watch a whole season to get to get. I'm like, you shouldn't, but if you want it, it's there. So you gotta keep going. <laughs> doesn't doesn't um, Andor come in threes though? So if you basically watch episode three, mm -hmm. six, and nine, you're probably gonna get awesome action and like really good stuff. I think so. Get the yeah. rest. I don't know. Well, just the last like, bit they took they uh, they took a cool THX one one three eight kind of vibe for the last three episodes. Like they went to George Lucas's original work and kind of did an oh, yeah. homage to that, and it looks really cool visually. 
Nice. I keep seeing people praise Andy Circus in it. That's kind of why I want to see it now because I'm like, oh, he's in it. Oh, so, yeah. He was good. Oh. He yeah, was what good can you do it. apart from praise Andy Circus? Really? I mean, yeah. Has he ever movies. had a bad performance? Yeah. Mm. Um, he's played you know, several monkeys. <laughs> he's pretty good, you know. He has played monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Enoch Mammon says, I finally rewatched Dog Soldiers after 20 years. I forgot how testosterone fueled that film is. All the soldiers were badass, especially Spoon. Yeah, he was. He went out like a boss. Uh, Box is a werewolf, kicks it so hard that it's tooth in beds in a wall. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. And taunts it before it eats him. What a legend. Uh, yeah, he, he goes out like a boss. He just goes, uh, I hope I give you the shits, you fucking wimp. <laughs> just before it eats him. <laughs> um, George Watkins says drinker will you have a plushie out by Christmas I should indeed um, yeah I don't know if it will be delivered before Christmas but it will be available before Christmas so that's all I can tell you right now but yeah there's one in the works Kevbot says hail drinker it's a snow day here in Denver but luckily I have open bar to keep me warm and toasty uh, you and Mauler need to do a happy hour for Back to the Future trilogy. The only IP that hasn't been destroyed yet. Cheers. What do you think about that, Mauler? I you think that I'm not. I shouldn't just be me. We should be inviting a whole bunch of people, all right? Get them I feelers think, out there. Yeah. I think we could have a lot of fun with that one. You got a lot of feelers, too, Mauler. So. Yep. <laughs> you be you be on one of them. I'd be like, let's bring Gary. <laughs> let's talk about Back to the Future. I'll watch Back to the Future again. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's again. A sacrifice we can all make. A thousandth time. All right, so it. I'm writing down my homework. Porn, Back to the Future. <laughs> Just make we combine those two. Porn, no, but put more porn right after that. <laughs> porn, Back to the Future, more porn. Yeah, you got to bookend it. Um, Kevin O'Neill says, as I said by sorry, as said by the late and great George Carlin, inside every cynical person is a disappointed idealist. That's probably very true, actually. Um, Martin Mayer says, Hey, drinker, leaving some coins so you can ideally enjoy a high-quality whiskey as I do. 27-year-old uh, uh, Lungamorn, uh, stop drinking that toilet duck called JD. <laughs> well, I know. Toilet duck is probably more effective than JD, but uh, yeah, I get where you're coming from, and thank you very much. Uh, Hassad the Hittite says, do you think uh, part of the problem with Hollywood not taking the time to think about what they're making is the producers are at heart consumers? Don't ask questions, just create new product and then get excited for next product. Question for all the panel. I think that works with a lot of other stuff in Hollywood, like your Yellowstones. Occasionally you'll get that with, with the model that they use. But when they started buying into fandoms, uh, it was a way to cut corners. It was a way to get a built-in fan base. We don't have to build something from the ground up. We got people who are here, and they just expected us to show up without really putting any work or time into it. There are rare exceptions, of course, but most of the time you get Alex Kurtzman on Star Trek. You get J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay who just bullshit their way in, say their fans don't know shit about the product and just want to make product and don't understand that like with in intellectual property like Lord of the Rings or Marvel comes a lot of homework, a lot of homework. And you should, God, who would who would hate to, like, oh, my God, for my job, I got to read a bunch of comics. Damn. For you know? Tolkien. Yeah. But it's odd if you think about it, Gary. It's like it's such a simple equation. Honor the material after you get to know it, love it, and then adapt it. I mean, it's not that difficult. Make a ton of money. Please a fandom. Mm-hmm. It seems simple, but it seems to be incredibly difficult for Hollywood today. Yeah. If you don't want to please the fandom, we need to re-educate the fandom and make them better. <laughs> um, Doctor Who says, running late must be Gary's fault. All hail to you, gentlemen. Have a pint or a coffee on me. Like, <laughs> it was Gary's fault. I'm just going to yeah, blame it. Gary's fault. Yep. <laughs> it's always his fault. Totally unfair. Uh, Tom Blunt says, if you've not said already, what are your thoughts on Andor? So I'm only halfway through, so I can't give a fully formed opinion on it, but uh, it's uh, it's very comprehensively made. It feels like probably the best quality Star Wars product that they've that Disney have put out um, so far. Uh, not exactly a, a thrill a minute, but... You know, Do you think it's I, like I, three days of the Condor drinker? I don't know. Oh, you mean, <laughs> what I'm saying, like, do you think in its quality terms, do you think it's a little bit like a too little, too late? 
I, I think so, yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's actually quite well made, but it's starring an obscure character in a prequel who we know is going to die. Mm. Um, and, and he's not a good lead. He's just not a good lead. He's not he, a compelling or good lead at all. Period. He's not a charismatic actor. He's obviously not a box office draw or anything like that. Nobody's going to go and see a fucking show or a movie with Diego Luna in it just because yeah. he's there. Um, and yeah, Star Wars has just burned so many bridges, particularly with its TV shows. Every single one of them has been shit. Um, yeah, none. all of those things have, have counted against Andor. And I think it's the cumulative effect of so many failures. And it's a shame because it's like, the one show that nobody's watching is probably the one show that they probably should watch. Yeah, it's just yeah, odd. There's a problem with it in that it's grounded reality is great in a lot of ways. It, it gives it a more mature tone. But at the same time, it's doing the opposite of what you want from Star Wars. You don't want to see workspaces, uh, public transport systems, infrastructure, uh, empty causeways, people move. I that, do. That's not the thing you go to see Star Wars. It, it's, it's funny because I do in a TV show. I, I think I can live with that. I wouldn't want to see that in a movie. But in a Star Wars TV show, I kind of expect it to be lower level. I kind of expect it to be a slice of life in these like just backwater planets and like the the low level machinations of the Empire because that's kind of what you want from a tv show it's it's lower budget and it's lo it's higher detail yeah they made they made the show 10 years too late 10 years too late. 10 years too late that by the way disney's had star wars for 10 years now and they wow. made it years too late this is what you should have been starting with but now you're doing this like bare bones showing the ins and outs of the star wars world after you kill luke skywalker it. and han solo <laughs> i kind of give a shit. i can care less uh, you've destroyed the world, and I have no faith in Disney for anything. They deserve no benefit of the doubt, and uh, it's too late. So all that's left is just to roast marshmallows over the studio. Mm -hmm. That's what for I'm doing. Disney, for Disney, yeah. <laughs> Until and if they, they if they get gutted by the Disney layoffs, I will shed absolutely zero tears. Yep. Yeah, me because neither. they brought this upon themselves. If uh, there's a gutting at Disney where Kathleen Kennedy's replaced oh. and Bob Chapek's replaced and the entire board is replaced and the story, group, jig. The, the, <laughs> the story group is dissolved and Pablo Hidalgo is gone, then, yeah, we can talk then. Mm -hmm. But not till then. Yeah. Um, Big Rog gave me a thumbs up, so thank you. Uh, Sifuris wow. says, all I saw was the good uh, all-female pirates movie, then I drink her drowning a bottle of Jack. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. What can we do? Uh, Andrew McCarty says, Hey boys, my vid's almost done. I just need to edit it. What program would you suggest? Question for all of you. Something simple. Well, uh, I guess it would be better to know more specifically what kind of project they're making, I guess. Yeah, I assume it's like a movie if review you are, or something. Are you, yeah, are you a super skilled, trained editor? Or are you just starting out? Because... Yeah, if I they could like, if they could say, oh, I want to make videos like, and then name a creator, we could probably narrow it down for programs. Because everyone, yeah. I think even everyone here uses slightly different programs. So, um, you know, it's... I use, I use Premiere. I'm back to Premiere, but I used to use Camtasia. Um, obviously, I'm on Pretty Vegas, but I don't recommend it. I, because it's, I only, I'm just so familiar with how it breaks. That's why I kind of stick with it at this point. Same with me with Camtasia. I was familiar with all of the horrible flaws that that thing has. Uh, Syndic uses Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere is the best, but it's, it's there's a learning curve there. Okay, you got to know what you're doing. I'm using some obscure knockoff called Movavi. <laughs> See, that's yeah. like everyone's that's doing something different. It's great. That's where you start. Like I, I, you know, I'm trained. I'm trained on Final Cut Pro and Avid. Like and I was using the simplest crap in the world until recently, so very recently. Final Cut Pro's on Mac though, so it Mac. just it, it yeah it depends how much time and effort you want to devote to your videos and how like complex the stuff you're you're wanting to do is. If you're just literally transitioning from clip to clip, it's like well pretty much any editor will do that for you. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's all you need. Um, Okay, next one is Waylon Bacephus says, I swear Jack Daniels and a pistol sounds inviting. <laughs> well, that's what movies today will do to you. Uh, George Watkins says, whenever I'm feeling low, these streams always lift my spirits. So thank you, lads, and love to you all. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're helping people out. Um, 
Eric K says, George. <laughs> assume that's for you, man. Yeah, hey, Eric. Uh, Mark um, Reeves. I'll just be right back, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark Colreeve says, Good evening, gentlemen. Love your content. Keep up the good work. Have any of you seen the Banshees of Inishirin? Inishirin? Not uh, yet. And if so, what do you think? I plan to see it because it looks pretty cool. It does look It looks very sweet and kind of a little bit dotty. Um, Is that a Colin a Farrell kind of and, um, what's yeah, his name? That one. Yeah, that other, the other guy who's been in like everything. Who no one remembers the name of. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. What's that actor's name? I'm blanking on his name now. Matt I. Moody. Uh, yeah. Oh, 28 Days Later. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Braveheart. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fucking know, awesome. That's, he's the reason I'm seeing it. Like Colin Farrell. Eh? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, the two on... of them were in, in Bruges together. In Bruges, yeah. yeah. This in is Bruges just was like... awesome. In Bruges yeah. was fucking yeah. awesome. Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. Thank Gleeson. Thank yeah. you, Brendan. Chat knows <laughs> Thank all. You. Thank you, chat. Chat, we'd be lost without you. Just want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the next one? Uh, Glee Man, who says, TLJ, Rings of Power, She-Hulk, etc. are not fan fiction. The writers are not fans of these properties. These Good stories are simply point. apocrypha, uh, non-canonical rubbish. It's yes. poser fiction. Poser fiction, that's what it is. Poser yep. fiction. With self-insert. I would think self-insert because they put in their ideology in there. But, but even then, self-insert would be a, an element of like love for the source material to want to put yourself in it. This is just like Good I point. want to subvert it and turn it into what I want, you know, make it my story. Right. By the way, uh, you guys deserve uh, uh, knighthoods and congressional medals of honors, respectively, just for watching <laughs> She-Hulk. I, I could never bring myself to do it. That, that was a slog. <laughs> During Rings of Power, dude, I didn't think I was going to survive, to be honest. <laughs> you had to do it in increments. You couldn't do it like too much at a time. I, I, I had to take a week episode. off. I had to watch like so many good things to for palate cleansers after that, Echo. <laughs> I, I just oh, watched yeah. oh. I watched Kill Bill before the last episode. You did? <laughs> yeah. Kill Bill Part 1, right? Because yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's yep. the good one. This is the real because good. when I saw that clip, did you see that uh, that dude that when they tried to do the Bill Bixby, I was like, I don't know, it just threw me off the way they had that. Uh, I yeah, I totally saw what they were trying to do. They just failed completely yeah. at at trying to be executed. Fourth wall breaking, cheeky, tongue in tongue in cheek. Uh, you know, trying to be Deadpool. They, like Disney can't be Deadpool because right. Disney's not right. funny. Right. Disney's not funny. It's not a funny organization. It's not uh, for, go, Jessica Gao, right? Who's an annoying. See you next Tuesday. Come on. Yeah. She wrote an episode, a couple episodes of Silicon Valley, which is one of the best shows I've ever seen. But that that to, that tells you the power of a showrunner because that was Mike Judge. That's a Mike Judge joint. So if you have good showrunners, you know. Uh, uh, oh my God, what's her name? Who was the writer for Rings of Power? I was about to say Lauren Hisrich, but she oh. wrote for Breaking Bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And she wrote two shitty episodes of Rings of Power. Like, how is that possible? Well, you know, you had Vince Gilligan looking over you. That's 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 the difference. Stephanie Folsom? No, uh, it it is. God, I keep wanting to say Lauren Hisrich because she's on my mind right now because that bitch should be should fucking fired. Uh, but it is. I'll, I'll look it up. Oh, the chat will t have it before I look it up. But uh, one, the one thing I struggle with is that one of the writers for She Hulk did uh, the Pickle Rick episode of Rick and Morty, which is yeah, that's Jessica Gow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just Jennifer Hutchinson. Oh. Jennifer Hutchinson, that's it. Yeah, but she wrote she two episodes. Wrote, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's like a big time writer. How does that uh, happen, Gary? Where you have a writer from from a top tier show who ends up shitting? Is that the writer's fault or is that the showrunner's fault? Both, but mostly Both. the showrunners. You, you never, yeah, writer. you never know what the the pressures are put on the writers. Like uh, how many restraints are put on them? It's like, well, it has to include well, this, this, and this. But shouldn't the writer say, "I can't compromise"? Like in the old days, they used to say, like, well, "You look at her IMDb," they would be... and it's like it's impressive. I'm back. It's pretty impressive. Uh, then she gets here. Then it has to be the showrunners. That has to be the only explanation. Like it was meddled with, or she just like tried to write something good, kept on getting too many notes, and just went fuck it. I'm gonna give them what they want and peace out. Yeah, you know, she and she got off of Twitter altogether. 
Right. Now, it might have been because of Elon, might have <laughs> been the rings of power, but she ain't on Twitter anymore. I know that. More in history, maybe... she's kind of vanished from Twitter as well. Did you notice that? Yeah, hmm. kind of quiet nowadays. So she did put something up on Instagram, which was regrettable. Uh, but uh, and she's getting killed. She's getting killed on somebody who did a video. It was either Josiah or Ryan did a video today. She posted on Instagram about the prequel. She's like, "I'm all about this." <laughs> and, and some of the some of the comments were nice in the beginning, and then it went to, "You drove off, Henry. You suck." <laughs> <laughs> I just love that they did a petition to like, like not fire Henry Cavill, like bring him back and just fire the entire writing staff. For the yeah. Future. Well, the well, minute the, only one like, the, lore. the producer should have gone, okay, what do you want? Oh, you want him fired? All right, no problem. <laughs> that used to happen all the time when the movie star threatened to leave. Yeah, like, oh, everybody we'll else fire. left. Everybody else got fired except for the movie star. <laughs> and they just have some lines of coke and work it all out. Exactly, <laughs> and yeah. like you're replacing think- Hemsworth with, with like Hemsworth light, okay? Uh, not nowhere near the best Hemsworth. Uh, it's not going to do. <laughs> I, I love how we keep coming back to Coke it's as the so solution good. to all of the problems <laughs> of Hollywood as well. <laughs> it's the Coke it the allows world. them to take risks, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. But what's odd is the fact that Henry, I saw two of his interviews, he seemed to be the only one who knew the lore on that show. <laughs> the directors, yeah. and producers, or nobody knew anything. Uh, Lady yep. Grave Master found me some audio two years ago, where he, before season two came out, where he was like, well, he's got a vision, and I have a vision, and eh, at the end of the day, it's her show. I'm paraphrasing, but he was warning us then, like, oh, yeah, not very happy. Poor Henry. Dude, they Poor gave him a million Henry. an episode. They gave him a million an episode, wow. and it wasn't, it wasn't enough to keep him around. Well, of course. I, he has character. I think he has character. I think the yeah. man has character. He loves his craft. Uh, Man of War 665 says, It is known George drinks Baileys from a shoe. It is known. <laughs> it is known. Hey, hey, Man of War. Uh, Wayland Vesepha says, Wakanda and country that speaks German would have agreed on a whole lot in 1939. I think Wakanda should embrace its nationalistic nature and spread it. I think they did. In the second movie, I think they did. They're like, We're not sharing any of this shit. Screw you. Yep. We don't trust well, and, you. Then, and then the solution was, oh, we got a guy in here who's going to kill everyone in the rest of the world to fix those problems of not looking after them. It was just like, God, you guys suck. <laughs> Both approaches are totally. horrible. And then they're like, dude, those are the two most powerful countries. Yeah, but America's filled with, like, superheroes. Superheroes yep. that they could oh, call yeah. at any time. And, and <laughs> Gary, I thought... I thought that was funny as fuck when you got like the Wakanda battle with the fucking I forget was it Tad Khan Khan whatever the fuck they're, they're all having their big old fight and it's just like you understand Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch either of them could annihilate all of you easily like uh, Namor could have annihilated them all easily that's the thing it's like and and I love Namor. <laughs> Well, I just did. love this idea of like Scarlet Witch comes in and just turns all their brains into like fucking like rocks or something. Hey, <laughs> like, yeah. I got this really great idea. Let's fight the water people on water. Yeah. Let's fight water. Let's With fight. our Wak- Wakanda submarine that we have for some reason. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think about them releasing that before you have Avatar coming out? Blue people and blue people. You I know. That is, Cameron's yeah. a little bit pissed off. <laughs> By the way, just for sheer uh, scale of bullshit, there was a five-minute sequence in Wakanda Forever, and I wrote down everything that happens in those five minutes. Uh, Okay, so we have CIA infiltrating building, a car chase, motorcycle pursuit, Iron Man-style flying suit worn by 19-year-old technology genius, observation drone, drone smashing into police barricades killing dozens, ancient Mexican civilization turned aquatic civilization warriors, warriors jumping off the back of a humpback whale in a city harbor, (laughs) <laughs> Close quarter combat between African warrior and aquatic warriors. Aquatic warriors dying and apparently reanimating. That's five minutes of screen time. <laughs> oh, dude, Absolutely. And then you have that to compare with like 40 minutes of nothing. Uh, yes. point. Like, yep. Shuri is sad. Uh, Akoya is sad. <laughs> Somebody wants Shuri to talk about her feelings. Shuri won't talk about her feelings. Yeah. No more yeah. won't shut the fuck up. Nobody no more told won't shut the <laughs> fuck up. No more bends the knee. Everybody bends the knee. Who's not one more combat? Yeah. Did you guys see the Dave Chappelle House of the Dragons get from no. SNL? It's yeah. it's on YouTube. I wouldn't watch SNL. It's okay. it's kind of fun. It's got a couple of funny moments. I wouldn't say it's the greatest skit in the world, but uh, I was wondering if you saw it or not. Since you're House of the Dragon fans, he brings back some Chappelle show regulars in it. 
So, what's he do? That's cool. Uh, makes fun of House of the Dragon, but it's pretty funny. It's it's uh, first off, they make fun of uh, uh, Corliss Valerian being black, and they they go out and he's all, yeah, because it totally makes sense for my people to be on a ship on water because we have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> that part was fucking funny. Uh, but, <laughs> I was dying, but it goes on like all SNL skits. It goes on a little bit too long, but uh, dude, that part was fucking funny so yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, eternal fps it says drinks on me fellas thank you man uh ramiro Barri- barrios says george that's all he's got george uh, ryan gingras says i was genuinely sad that the female pirates movie was cancelled i was so looking forward to you guys roasting it we, we could have a field day really yeah dude it would have given us a reason to like talk about pirates of the caribbean probably as well as a franchise we just have to make do with uh, with the Marvels, I suppose. Oh, yay. <laughs> what can we do, eh? Um, Phil Swift says, I can't even watch Marvel movies for this, the cool CGI anymore. Like the popcorn action movie that isn't even that anymore. It's CGI I, awful. Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, as bad as the plot was, had phenomenal visuals. Yeah, it's just, it's just lazy. It's just factory produced CGI stuff. Yeah. Yeah, can't can't really care about it. Uh, Casey Boyd says, "Just watched Big Trouble in Little China for the first time. Crazy eighties movie with Kurt Russell one liners, but very enjoyable. How much does the time period factor into critic reviews? Does the panel allow more or less leniency?" Good question. I love Big I, Trouble in Little China. That that's a great film to see for your first time. Yeah, I would allow leniency when it comes to the the VFX and stuff, for obvious reasons. Like the technology just wasn't as advanced. But, but you know what 80s to... films could do that modern films can't is that 80s films, the third act would be balls to the walls, bananas. It would just go to a different level. The Blues Brothers, the last oh, 50 God minutes damn, of that is insane. Movie. The last 30 minutes of Ghostbusters is insane. Animal House. The last 30 minutes of Big Trouble in Little, it just goes to this crazy extra level. And they can't seem to be able to do that anymore. I really nope. miss it. Escape, I do. From, New York. Escape from New York. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you know that Johnny Depp was nominated for an Academy Award for the first pirates movie for acting well i mean nobody can beat him on the on that role that's no yeah i mean he couldn't see anyone else playing captain jack like no 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 (laughs) and he could have played captain jack for fucking 10 more years easy uh can you imagine jim carrey as captain jack no (laughs) like that you could probably (laughs) do a terrible like if you really wanted to try and make it serious you could make a like an old man captain jack story along with an aging uh, Johnny Depp, to be honest. Some kind of story relates to that. You don't have to kill him. Everyone thinks you have to kill them. You don't have to kill them. No, no, no. And you don't have to deconstruct them. Nope, you don't have to do any of that. Just have him be the fucking experienced and on top of it pirate. Back Back to Marvel real quick. Remember that Jon Favreau got ran off because of Iron Man 2. Because it was considered a disappointment. After Iron Man one, they didn't introduced. Didn't he hate doing it as well? And he really pushed. Um, they Robert ran him off. out of caring out about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they so, ran so much him of it off. was just introducing the next film and that was like setting up the Avengers and stuff. And like. It was, it was, and they tried to put this all off on Ike Perlmutter. Remember that was every right. every bad thing from the MCU was his fault. But now they're doing everything they have been doing, and he's not. And Perlmutter's nowhere near it. Wasn't he the one who was kind of reining in Feige, or at least being a sounding guy yes. to say, don't go this far? Yeah, don't well, go. he would yeah. say stuff like, Captain Marvel ain't going to sell action figures. Right. Which she didn't. He's fucking right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And plus, he was a Trump supporter, so that's why they ran him off. So what do you uh, give to Feige's lifespan, Drinker, in one Marvel? You think it's... Five years. Well, do I think he's going to be around for for much longer? I Five mean, and six. Yeah, I think yeah, he'll be around for the next couple of phases. Then he'll probably just want to leave by that point. He'll be so fucking sick of it. Uh, but yeah, he's had so many successes. Like you can't oust a man like that. Do you think uh, he wants I to go out he... on like one more end game high? Like go out on a high? Like create? Absolutely. Okay. He should have gone out after end game. Feel smart. Yeah, I, I think his problem now is he's, he's, you know, they're spread between so many different projects. He can't even keep track of it all. 
and probably is not even he doesn't even really give a shit about a lot of these TV shows. That's why the quality is garbage. Yeah. Um, but he's in control of everything at Marvel: the the publishing, the TV, the film. Like he signs off on everything, and he's yeah, he's got too much on his plate. And as yeah. far as control of the publishing, it's don't fuck with the movies or the TV show. I doubt he's there day to day, but he is in control of Marvel Comics right now, which is at the worst state it's ever been in, ever. So is Downey then and the old cast who aren't there, are they just like the rip cords when everything goes to crap? Mm -hmm. They'll come back. You throw what, enough money Wars? at them, they'll come back. Secret Wars or New World Order? Secret Wars. Okay. Because I just uh, still have a difficulty believing people are going to like New World Order with Captain America going, Hail Hydra. If they do that, it's I mean, it's over anyway. I mean, yeah. like, you can only push the, the public so far until apathy kicks in. We're seeing that with Andor right now. Um, and, I mean, did, did Marvel hit that breaking point? I, I think it's going to be oh. a slower breaking point, but yes. Remember, yeah. the the almost sphere that we're a part of it was always there but i think tlj essentially jets like fucking created it like it was loads of people flocked to the internet being like i can't be the only one that saw this <laughs> like what is going on here and like every time they do that it's another it's another nail in the coffin like they uh they keep jet like it, you know it's only so much the audience can take like i told you even uh, my dad in his age is, is just absolutely accepting of pretty much any media at this point but even he like I, i've told this story before but it's just he was the last one in my family to give up on game of thrones he held in until that last episode and as soon as bran got on the throne he was like fuck this the show's done <laughs> <laughs> well that was horrible this is horrible yeah, I, uh, I would yeah. say like marvel's as bad as game of thrones season it's worse it's worse like marvel's as bad as fucking last jedi now it's it's fucking terrible it, well, i think it, it's, it's it's the ability to become a parody of yourself but still yeah. embrace it nonetheless and just carry on like damn that takes dedication it's like i don't care that people are just like laughing at me now for being formulaic and just factory machine produced garbage just gonna keep doing it yeah Who cares? It's money. You your own, yeah your own writers pointing it out and then fucking with your story in a meta way by commenting on how formulaic and shit it is. She literally said, I destroy bad writing, and that's what we were right. having with the robot. Like, that's what she... Has anything ever succeeded when it's just like, we're shit, keep watching us? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, but if we, if we point out and recognize the fact that we're shit, that means we're awesome. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. You have to then produce good stuff. Uh, Gary, you might be able to help me out with the law, but in House of the Dragons, apparently the dragons, they just get so old that they just get bigger and bigger until they just eventually die of their sheer scale and size. Yeah, and they die. Like an, like an apt metaphor for, for Marvel. Yes. Uh, it is getting too bloated, and they're making they're making more money now, but they're also putting out like five times the amount of content that they used to put out. They used to put out two movies and no TV shows. Two movies and no TV shows. And remember, I remember the time we're going to get, oh, we're going to get two Marvel movies a year. I remember Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when it came out, and that was a big yeah. deal. And then they separated it after yeah. after season two. They separated it from the lore. Joss Whedon was less involved. And, uh, the, this, and is a, this is a never-ending cycle, though, isn't it? Because now, because the, they're be so beholden to their shareholders to keep producing more profits, the, the revenue from each individual project movie TV show, whatever, is going to keep declining. So their only solution then is going to be more. Keep producing more. Like, the, are we going to get into this position where they're going to be like a new Marvel TV show every couple of weeks? Just constantly producing more stuff that's launching because that's the only way they can keep maintaining that level of profit. Every so quarter. Like a, an entertainment version of the Lehman Brothers. Yeah. 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 Too big to fail. It's quarterly. You got to put something out before the end of the year, right at the beginning of the yeah, year. Yeah. And yeah, it's all about getting those quarterly profits up. And uh, guess what? It ain't working. It's not well, it's, working. The, it's the saturation point. Like we've said it before, and I, I totally agree with it. Like there comes a point where the, the average audience is just going to say, I, I'm sick of this. I don't want any more superhero shows. I don't need any more superhero characters in my life. 
you know, there's going to be fans from the comic books who are going to be, you know, excited to see their particular hero up on the big screen, but that's niche now. The general audiences are just, they're oversaturated with this. Yeah, when, when the Eternals came out and just failed, that should have been the wake-up call right there. Like, we just came out with a bunch of Disney Plus shows and the Eternals, this is bad, we need to turn things around. And maybe that's why Chapik mentioned in his in his letter, we need to be more nimble because I mean, turning around for Disney is it's a three, it's three years minimum for them to turn anything around. And that's just, you can't do that anymore. That, that we don't live in a world where people are going to wait three years for you to turn your company around. No. Uh, well, the more things you've got in play, the, more, the longer it's going to take you to, to change direction, isn't it? Because all that yeah. stuff has to come through the pipeline and get produced and, and get out there. And then you can start to change things. And yeah, the, the more things you've got, the, the slower that process is. Mm -hmm. so, and, well, and the woke ideology gets you in trouble because it'd be very simple to just cancel everything. Cancel Echo, cancel Ag Agatha Harkness, uh, but they can't because it'll make them look bad on their ESG and uh, on Twitter. And like, who cares? Like uh, the point, Zaslaw finally was the first guy who just said, I'm going to cancel Batgirl. And I don't care what you think. I yeah. don't. It's just going to, it's not fine. It doesn't make any financial sense for us to do this. We're going to lose our asses. And he didn't want to hurt a brand. I was surprised. He's like, I don't want to further hurt the brand. Save the money. And, not and if them. the head of DC says this movie's <laughs> going to hurt my brand, fucking hell, it must be bad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the term they had for it is they had a funeral screening for it, but they allowed a select, like, some tiny group of people in a sealed room or whatever to actually watch the product, like the people who made it or whatever. What a strange, ghoulish, macabre term. We're going to have a funeral right. watching. It's a strange one, yeah. Because, like, what are you supposed to do with that? It's like, well, I've seen a, a movie that nobody will ever get to watch. Great. Uh, that was nice. <laughs> Drinker, could you imagine writing a novel and then there's one day where 20 people are allowed to, in a room, read it, and then that's it. That's the, the completion of, of that process. I think, uh, well, I think that's what a lot of writer, writers go through when they don't get their first novel published or their second novel. You know, it's it's seen by a couple of editors and that's it. And then yeah. it gets shit canned yeah. and uh, that's as far and as it ever goes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I felt sorry for the, the people that worked on Batgirl, like as <laughs> shit as it might have ended up being. We'll never know. But um, I mean, wouldn't yeah. you at least have wanted to take out your phone and just like secretly record the screen and just <laughs> release that online i mean yeah you know i i've heard stories about like you know they, they went in like warner brothers the studio went in and basically deleted um everything that was on the the database like all the the digitally archived footage that they'd recorded it was all just deleted from the server before they could <sighs> nab it it was yeah. that clinical it was that brutal it's just like nope your film's been erased from history now <laughs> It's not an easy thing to do. Um, I mean, I don't know what Warner Brothers is like, but I was I had access to Paramounts, all of Paramounts through Technicolor, and there's just pockets of data everywhere. You can get there was copies of movies absolutely everywhere. To erase everything would be very difficult unless people just didn't give a crap or security was tighter. I I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't know how they could have done that. At least have yeah. one, so then you can do a Wu Tang clan like with that. Yeah. Cult. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it was Zaslav who said they there couldn't be any copies because of the tax break because of getting that money back. Yeah, yeah. Right, they, if, I, I so is this, yeah, is this written off as a loss, so they don't have to pay tax on it. Like the eighty-seven or one hundred and seven million, whatever the figure was. Yeah. But I remember the actresses going, hey, "We should have the public decide." He's like, "Yeah, no, no, no." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the public would have decided the movie would have come out and bombed. Okay, it just it would have bombed. It would have been a massive, massive bomb. I thought her suit was horrible anyway. You would have wasted Michael Keaton's return, and that would have been before Flash. Oh, yeah. It's, it, the, those are the guys I feel sorry for. It's like Michael Keaton and Brendan Fraser. Like they deserve better. <laughs> Stop yeah, abusing them. I, 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 this is where casting your directors and all that shit doesn't it, it does more damage when you go away from meritocracy and you and you you cast people based on their skin color and you give them this false sense of hope like hey i'm actually making it in hollywood and then when the trend dies they don't get any work uh and that's hollywood they, hollywood doesn't give a fuck about people that's what we always try to point out they tried they're they're rolling out all this 
identity politics and virtue signaling. They could care less. Movie producers are some of the worst human beings on the planet. They are. Uh, they're cruel. And, uh, you know, th for them to come out in their soapbox, especially when they get to, especially when actors and producers get to award shows and they've got their, they, they've got their uh, fight systemic racism uh, purse that costs $50,000 and they're telling us how to live. Fuck off. Okay. We, we all see through this. Uh, and and hopefully more people will, and uh, that way we can get back to a meritocracy where you're not uh, discriminating against anybody for anything, and you just base it on work, and that that's how more people get work by getting better. That's mm -hmm. it, and you're not getting anybody better. You're not helping anybody by treating them like like a puppy, okay? Like a child. Uh, yeah, like a child. Like oh, we're gonna help all these underrepresented marginalized people how would you, how in the fuck i, I would be That's pissed that. yeah like, fuck <laughs> you. marginalized well it's the same thing when that activist never heard her words when she was like hey, don't not only go to the premiere of wakanda forever but if you go and you buy a movie ticket go give it to a black family like okay so i'm supposed to walk up to a family and go hey deadbeat you can't afford this yeah. so let me give yeah. you these tickets and embarrass you in front of your family there you yep. go it's like your savior is here. Yes. I'm gonna give this to you. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Uh, I mean, that's why you need everyone to have a voice, whether it's the people who have a, a more radical leftist ideology or right ideology in the middle. Like, show all the films, let people decide, give them the yeah. entertainment they want. Let them stand on their own merits. Yes. Well, on that bombshell. I feel like that's probably a good place to end this stream, actually. I feel like we made our pro our points pretty effectively there. Yes. Um, and yeah, I want to say thanks to all you gentlemen for joining us for this. Um, thank you. Echo and, and George, Like this is your first time on Open Bar, so thank you for coming in for this, thank you, you guys. Um, wow, the, yeah. the links to these guys' channels is in the description, so please give them a follow because um, they are producing awesome stuff. Um, Gary... It's always an honor to have you on, man. Thanks for Thank having for me coming. on, man. I love Thank you for coming. Fun. No problem. Your your rants are spectacular. I love it. <laughs> How's extra Randy today? Yeah, well, extra Randy sometimes. today. <laughs> well, uh, uh, thanks, yeah. thanks for having me on the uh, the unrivaled synergy machine that is uh, open bar. Yes, <laughs> unrivaled synergy. Yeah. Uh, and Mueller as well. Thank you for being my co-host. You as don't always. have to mention it, Drinker. It's okay. It's, I love <laughs> you. Ah, <know>? you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, and yeah, thank you to everyone in chat and to, uh, for everyone that's super chatted us. It's it's been fantastic. Uh, I think we were up about fourteen thousand people watching us live at one point. So that's awesome. Um, and if we've missed any super chats, we will, as always, catch up with them on catch up stream on Sunday. So don't worry there. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for everyone that's joined us tonight. But for now, I guess that's all we've got for today. So go away now. Bye-bye. See Bye. you.